We're back. Welcome to our 131st episode of Gorilla Radio. We're going to do state recap. We Mike just cut off our hour-long pre-show that we were talking about state, so we might as well just talk about it live then, right? <laughs> a lot more cussing in that pre-show. <laughs> yes, lots of, uh, oh man, if only, if only we could, we'd have to charge like $100 a, you know, just per time you get to sit in on the uh, pre-show. <laughs> oh yeah, and that would be more of a... Uh... You know, if you hear what you're on the pre-show, you got to keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, we did a couple. Uh, we did a couple uh, live girl radios with no camera at the state finals after shows. A couple spots, met up with some wrestling fans, talked some wrestling, did some after shows. Oh yes, I was in. Saw, saw some some dude dude get uh, beat up a little bit for running his mouth. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. We we hit the. Um, Saturday night bingo. We seen this high speed chase downtown. <laughs> yes. Uh, got to go see a lot of friends. Saw a fight. Ate some street hot dogs. Which, yeah. in hindsight, maybe during the COVID pandemic, not the best thing. <laughs> I, I haven't. Yeah, I, I haven't had any issues with that. <laughs> nope. <Yeah. you're> good. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Maybe that's how you care COVID. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so maybe. Maybe it's some. Uh, some Indianapolis street hot street uh, coney dogs. Or how it I goes. Think, I think my buddy Matt bought out then. I think Kim told me that he bought out the entire stand. There was a pretty long line. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, great weekend. So, of wearing wrestling. a backwards hoodie uh, in our hotel in the <laughs> elevator. I think it was Bobby Joe's boy. Yeah. Hey, at least we didn't get stuck in the elevator with 18 people. Bro, like, yeah, let's, let's talk about that because I've been wanting to post this the whole day. At the time that people get on, I, I see like six in the elevator. I'm like, I'm going to go with the next one, right? <laughs> like 18, no chance I'm getting in it. Like they almost turned that into a haunted hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Butler is correct. That might not be good for COVID. That's probably worse than the street hot dogs. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, once you've seen that ninth person get in, uh, I think there's a capacity of 10 usually on those. Yeah. I'm getting out. There's no chance. Like I, I couldn't do it. I got stuck in an elevator one time when I was in college. I was doing the laundry for the wrestling team, and our wrestling room was upstairs. And we had this big uh, trash bin with a uh, trash can with a with wheels. And I just I didn't want to take it down the stairs. I was semi lazy, but it was easier just to go. To, and I got stuck in the elevator, going up and down. I never took the elevator again. They had to like call the fire department, whoever, to let me out. It wasn't. I mean, I wasn't in there too long, but I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Bro, I'm, the- I'm, I was like. I'm never going to that elevator. I'll, I'll go up the one stair, one flight of stairs the, to get up. The elevators at the Burns Harbor Mill, one, they're like rickety. They're extra rickety. <laughs> and like they shut, they like people get trapped in there all the time. Oh. My boy told me he got trapped in there one time for eight hours. And I'm thinking like, is it eight hours at the end of the day? Because that's terrible. Or is it eight hours at the beginning of the day? Because I can do that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Reeves, Reeves family got stuck in, in the elevator two years, his junior year at the hotel. <laughs> It's like, oh my goodness, that would not have been good. I would not Dude, have been it's terrible. Happy. Yeah, that's not that's not a good place to be stuck. Yeah. <laughs> even <laughs> even if you have five or six people, let alone or you're by yourself by yourself, that's even worse. So luckily Man, those people are able probably to get tickets because it didn't take till it took till midnight to get tickets. Do you think that I seen that post too that they said uh was it during the time when everyone was trying to get tickets? <laughs> Someone was sabotaging them. <laughs> Uh, dude, oh, that was yeah. terrible. Yeah, I'm just so the to... thing was, I like the I I'm gonna go on record and say I like the reserve seating, like not rushing back from lunch, having getting to enjoy lunch and have a nice meal. We went to uh, Harry and Izzy's. It was nice. It was pretty good lunch. Not having to rush back and fight people for seats was great. I had seats I was giving away for free. I don't even think I think I said, hey man, uh, if anyone wants tickets, like I got some right here. Yeah. Just Actually, I spread out, you know, I think someone understood in that. I don't even know him, but it's, it's all good. But like the beginning of that, like I was like panicked. And then, uh, as you're seeing everyone else doesn't get in, it's like, all right, we just got to stay persistent. Yes. We got to be like David Maldonado Jr. out here. <laughs> if we just keep heavy on the head, good stamina. Keep press like, refresh. Right. <laughs> five yeah. at five at five. <laughs> Could have had him on, on there. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that was very interesting about uh, the tickets. I'm still trying to figure out what, because yeah. I, I was thinking about it a little bit. You know, I'm a computer guy. If you guys don't know, I'm a software engineer for, that's what I do for a day job. This is not my day job, but you know, I'm like, what happened? But 
see that was a Pacers website. It was technically it was through Ticketmaster, but I almost wonder if that's on a totally different server that doesn't get a lot of traffic usually. I mean, Pacers tickets are hot, but they're not that. I mean, they're not usually that hot unless it's for maybe a playoff ticket. I would assume. Now, I might be wrong with this, so I wonder if there, if it really wasn't since it since it went when you went on Ticketmaster, it referred you to a different link. It was like am.ticketmaster.com or whatever. So I'm almost wondering if this was a Pacers website that had no indication that it would have a lot of traffic. Like if it was playoff tickets, I'm sure they uh, increase resources like memory, uh, CPUs, things like that. I know I'm getting over some people's head by just saying that stuff. But um, I wonder if that's kind of what was what happened. Uh-huh. And then they finally like, oh, crap, something's going on here. Bro. I had to reset. That would be so... I'd be so pissed off if I got stuck in this elevator and then they charged me extra money. I would be so upset. <laughs> that would be, I didn't even know TJ McMurray was down there. Now my weekend was ruined. Yeah. Well, uh, his brother got inducted in the hall of fame. So congrats. Oh, I did, I did. I did see that. We weren't at the hall of fame bank where we did. We, our we invites get, got lost. We don't get many invites to the hall of fame. <laughs> yeah. I'm disappointed. My uh, media invites been lost in the mail for the last 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's been, a, it was a great, uh, great weekend and lots of stories, you know, even off the mat. Um, so yeah, uh, whew, can't, I mean, just craziness of, uh, everything, but we'll give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what's going on. We're going to do a recap show tonight and then, uh, Wednesday, we're going to do the awards, uh, Mr. Gorilla coaches and wrestlers of the year awards we just sent out the ballots for mr gorilla award uh today i can tell you it's pretty not close race (laughs) so um and so uh yeah so that that we're gonna do that on thursday and maybe do some other stuff we'll talk about that maybe later um and then that'll be kind of a season recap maybe we'll do some stuff as the season goes on at off season i do want to do more but Life gets in the way, so. Um, yeah, I started playing softball every single weekend, so I don't know how you, you guys feel, but I'm sure a lot of parents are feeling exhausted. I mean, I I was exhausted today too. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm first day working a full day again, full till five. Like, man, what? Are I, oh, geez, I gotta be here all day. But yeah, they, it's uh, you need a couple days to there. relax, and then, then there's I have a whole list of things I gotta do. Like I had to get oil changes. I gotta schedule oil changes for my cars that I put off for the past two months. <laughs> You know, things like that. So You don't change your own oil, Joe? Come on. No, I get free ones on our cars. Come on. I'm just joking, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm a software engineer. <laughs> I got a computer to do that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, got that, uh, you know, putting off things. I'm, I've got a list. Like, I got to do some other things with some, I oh, mean, I got to do this and that. Like, I, I put off, like, everything with life in the past two weeks. So, now it's catching up with me. But. He has to moderate the site because everyone's starting to make new names. Yes. You know, give some people some timeouts. I, I kind of made a made up a rule on uh, Friday night. If I have to hide one of your posts, you're going to be uh, getting put timeout for a couple of weeks. So I don't have to worry about you. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of traffic on the board, which is cool. Yeah. It's always cool to see like. Uh, the, the, obviously the forum is cool. I know it drives you crazy because you have to monitor it. You have to babysit a little bit, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, I mean, it, past few weeks it started getting hot and heavy and it's always good. It's always good when there's a lot of action on there and a lot of people, you know, posting stuff It, you know, that's something that is a pain in the butt at times, but it's actually, you know, it's a great way to get information out. Um, you know, and people still use it regularly, so it's going to stay for the time being until I can find a suitable re- replacement for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so exciting though. Exciting weekend. Talk about some of the wrestling before we get too uh, too far in there. We got you know as I had some I have some notes. Uh, four over ones. There are five of them. This one, two, three, four. Five. There are five. I only have four in that. Uh, so Center Grove. One, two, three. Oh, they went three and two. Or three and zero. Oh. Um, first off, Fort Wayne is the be- second best semi-state. <laughs> I know, man. Who's seen that coming? I did. <laughs> no, who saw that? I mean, you've been saying that for years, but who who had that picked? No one had that on the bingo card. <laughs> yeah. Good for them, though, man. They showed out Friday night. 
and Friday morning, they did really well. Um, I was, I was obviously Evansville was the best in my state. We got to yeah. give props to Evansville. They did a good, a great job. Uh, we, we talked about the depth all year. They, they did well, man. They have a ton of medals. Mm-hmm. Um, and they went three and out. They had three, four over ones. Um, and almost had four over a. I was happy to see a, Jason Leach and Quinn Harris too, man. <laughs> Quinn looking sharp, man. That baby Boy, blue. Did he, he had that jacket made, or you think that was something he bought off the off the rack? Uh, that, that's not. I mean, unless it's at the Cascade, uh, Cascade. Uh, what's the uh, Just for Men or whatever uh, store men's warehouse? I don't. I don't know if Cascade has a men's warehouse or not, but if they do, they probably have that there. Mike Mike Morgan with the sparkly jacket looking sharp. Vince Sessa with the with the whole uh, outfit for the finals looking pretty sharp. Yeah, yes, he was. I, <laughs> I was waiting for his heel turn. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> that was a funny one, but uh, hey, Jason, well, you you got to almost see me get into a fight at IPO, so I don't know what you're talking about. You like seeing me, <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, uh, four over ones was very were very interesting because Fort Wayne went two and two, four over ones. Uh, we lost two, uh, Tishner and Kukulan, and then we won that, two. That, was, that Tishner won. That was his first loss too. That was a good match. Yeah, I was really think good. at thirteen we just got the brutal, most brutal draw we could get because I think I think Doster and Tishner are both top eight guys. They just got paired up with the just worst possible draws, and I kind of knew that from. Them. I was like, oh, that's not where we want to be. Uh, so, um, and then Fort Wayne won Jellison at heavyweight and Caden Lone at 60 when we made the clean sweep there. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, Fort Wayne at 160. <laughs> and Jellison was wrestling well, uh, had a really good Al Smith. Uh, that was a, that was a good one. That was Friday morning. Yeah. Friday morning. No, it was Friday night. Right. No, it was morning. Yeah. Jellison and Watts. Yeah. Uh, and then what was the other one? I'm sorry. Uh, loan over uh, U- Ulison at U- Houston at uh, 160. Yeah, and loan obviously. Uh, we we knew he was really too. We knew he was really good. Um, th- I think that was one of the, one, the 160 was one of the better weight classes for four win four win overall. We kind of talked about it during the the shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that's pretty interesting. You know, oh, uh, Newcastle went 0 and three with uh, with four over ones. Uh, East Chicago was not involved in any. They they, they went to chalk. They didn't pull any upsets, nor did they get any. Our yeah. champs are trying to get in the finals, man. Now nah, they did a good job. I think uh, we yeah, lost three Newman, out of four. Yeah, Newman versus Seven Goodwin. Eight. It was almost a four over one. That was crazy. Yeah, that, that was, was right like, before we were wrestling. I was like, oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, I think uh, that was a really good match. Uh, Newman took him to his back. Those guys were spent afterwards. They left it out there. Yeah. Did, you saw the picture. They were just like, <laughs> they're laid on the mat. I mean, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, obviously, there's I've been sharing a ton of pictures on Facebook and stuff. Uh Check those out. Got some great photographers um, that were taking pictures of all different angles and different matches. So check that stuff out. There's a lot of great photographers that share their pictures on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else. So um, yeah, cool. who are the you want you want to shout them out or what? Yeah, um, you got Punch War or um, on on Twitter or it's uh, Adam Hartso. Um, he's been doing a great job. And then um, yeah, Dejo Photos. Uh, D A G A O on Facebook. Uh, they have a lot of great pictures from Newcastle and um, and obviously some a lot from State. And then uh, what's it? Duchess Jacks is that what she's called? Yeah, I think um, Duchess Jacks. Duchess Faith Jacks Huff. Photography. Um, that's Faith Huff. She's dating Eli. She's fiance to Eli Dickens from Modern Day. She's done a lot. She went to Team State and added some pictures from state, the state finals. So um, has some Evansville pictures too. So uh, a lot of great pictures from her. Um, and then uh, Josh Daniels from from uh, the region. The region. So I know he has. He's on. Uh, I know he's on Instagram. I'm not sure exactly if he does well on uh, on uh, on the uh, if he's on Facebook or anywhere else. I Nick said Wayne Wells got a lot of good pictures. Also, I seen uh, <clears throat> Evan Cruz down there taking pictures. So a lot, of, a lot of pictures out there. I mean, I'm sure those guys are sharing with you guys. They're down there. Yeah. But I know those are the guys for the site that that were doing them. 
<clears throat> ton, ton of good matches. Uh, how'd you like the split session? I mean, you were you got to enjoy the the night because they started at uh, one fifty two. Yeah. Yeah. So we got both our matches out on Friday on Friday morning. <clears throat> I, I'll tell you the one re- one reason I like it is because warm-ups are considerably easier with only 112 kids wrestling instead of 224. I would... If we're going to stick with... Uh, um, if we're going to stick with one session and not... Oh, actually, sorry, let me back up. If we're going to stick with 16 qualifiers, I like the one session. I don't... The parade in the morning was pitiful. I mean, that, there's no music, there's no energy. At best, we, it was half the stadium was half full, um, and that so I kind of thought it'd be like that, especially with the tickets, um, because everyone had to get a ticket, whether you're going just the one session or two, or you know. And I like, you know, I, I like a full stadium. I mean, the, there's ten, fifteen thousand people there for one session to watch the parade and everything. I'd kind of almost like if they would, if they're gonna do. I'd I'd rather have like you know maybe an hour break in between like after one fifty one forty five that way the other kids can get warmed up and get going um instead of have you know or a half hour break maybe um that way lightweights don't have to you know upper weights don't have to warm up you know three hours before their matches i i mean yeah i i like the warm the warm up is the best thing about it less people to get in i mean I know when getting into the building is a pain in the butt that first day when there are a hundred coaches and 200 and some kids trying to get the streets are old man. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, I, (sighs) yeah, so Um, I don't, I, 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 there there can be some modifications. I think we can work with it. Um, and I, and I hope that, you know, the IHSA listens and says, okay, here's what we let's, let's, (laughs) you know, it's kind of like team state. They've tweaked it. This was okay. Could be better. Tweaked it again. Um, I think it can be tweaked to a way that we can get it done right and, and get it done. Right. I'd love, to, I, honestly, what I would love. This is my maybe a semi pipe dream. I know the coach association proposed it. You know, add a fifth or sixth qualifier from each semi state. Then we can run a rat tail round there. Great. We'll run that round and then run, you know, then run uh, everybody else. You know, in the in the evening session. I could do that. Yeah. I could do with something like that, or maybe just not as long of a break between the sessions. I mean, you really don't. Do you really need to clear the arena? I mean, you could start at three o'clock. Well, I think uh, uh, now yeah. that like they're lifting some of the COVID restrictions and a lot of lift different things. And I think that's initially what that was for. Maybe, maybe they will. You know, not have to clear the arena. Maybe they will. I think it shows that we can manage the time differently. Like everyone's already taking that day off, anyways. Now, you know. Now we have a full day. We have a lot more options. I, I, that's that's the positive I look at it from. Yep. Yeah. I like. Yeah. I, I, you're you're exactly right there. You know, there's a lot of options that we can toy with this and juggle this around. Obviously, they're not going to go willy nilly. Hey, let's add qualifiers. Oh no, let, we're going to take them away next year and then add them and you know play that game. But um, so yeah, I would. I, personally, I liked being able to get in the building quicker and easier. Um, yeah. That was. I mean, I just, that line, I know you've tried to get in that line and, and they want us, made us go in a different area this year. Actually had us, um, had a lot of the, uh, staging inside, which was nice because it was freaking freezing. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was nice. But th- that line, that first night is just, it's crazy because they're, they're 200 and some coaches trying to get in 200 kids. You have 500 people trying to get in one door, so yeah. So that'd be. I mean, we can tell. I, th- I think we can modify it and juggle it, and you know, make tweaks that make, would make it good. And I, I'm not totally against it. The, the parade was something that, while I'm not the biggest fan of it because I have first world problems and I've been I've done it 17 times. Um, I would. I think it needs a little more energy. It kind of just seemed kind of blah. Like we walked around and half, you know a few people cheered for us and you know, I, I think that's, that hurts the kids more than anything. So, um, um I'm not sure. I was just kind of reading some of the stuff. Uh, I, I think we get this a little bit. I don't know if you get it. I, I get it. And I always tell people like 
formatting stuff. I have no formatting. I don't do any of the formatting on the site. <laughs> like I, I literally do rankings and I do this and I get on the message board. And I'll tell you at a higher level, I have zero pool with the IHSA. So like any, all we're doing is like talking. Like I don't, I don't have any kind of, I don't have Robert's number. I can't call and say, Hey, we should do this. And if I could, he probably wouldn't listen to it. <laughs> uh, I think we just, so I don't, I don't, I'm just reading some of the comments and it's like, we don't have, we, we can listen, but like, there's nothing we're gonna, we can do to change it. You know? Yeah. I think I, and all I see, I'll, I'll, I'll say this out loud, uh, you know, stuff we've talked about kind of private, you know, semi privately is, you know, the old saying you get, you get more with, you get, you track more bees with hun- uh, honey than vinegar. So the coaches association is the path to getting things changed. It's not yes. me. It's not Joe fan over here uh, nope. emailing the IHSA and say, Hey, you need to change that. Um, you know, and that's goes with anything within wrestling, you know, girls wrestling, some people I've seen some things on social media that people are, you know, saying things and that's not the way we're going to get things done with the no. IHSA. That's not how they work. It, you know, it's just like, you know, when you're with it, when you're a younger kid and you mouth off to your parent asking, you know, I want to go, out, I want to extend my curfew to 12 o'clock and they're like, no. And then you start F bombing them. And guess what? That means that that curfew is going to be 10 o'clock instead of 11, <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I think it's tough, man. I don't know. Uh, hopefully the coach association is able to, I mean, I'm sure you can send an email. I don't know if you'll get a response. I don't know how often they're responding. I'm sure there's an IHSA site you can go to and they probably have, uh, um, emails there you can you can send and I mean they, they answer I don't know yeah. please be uh, respectful I, and understand I've never that, that's the biggest thing I can say be respectful and understand that you know it's you know that, that that's the biggest thing just be respectful and be an adult and don't be you know yeah uh, don't I mean because that that can that'll hurt whether you think that it don't moan or not that'll hurt the perception of them of wrestling fans oh they just complain a lot they just send me emails and say i'm I'm a terrible per you know we're terrible this terrible that you know i think um and the coach association does have they're the ones that make the proposals they're the ones that uh you know go that route you know if i don't know how the voting is i think it's obviously with the coaches Mm -hmm. you know those guys they represent the state essentially they have the loudest voice you know like they have the most back and forth with the IHSA. Uh, they're they have, they have a table on the floor. They're right there. You know they have a big banner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the coach association would be the best way, honestly. Send an email to Danny Struck. He's the president right now. Vice president's Jason Cook. He usually flirts in here. Um, you yeah. know, honestly, those guys are the ones that have the influence, and you know, give them the ideas. Uh, they are. I mean, I've really never emailed Jason except I did email him yesterday. He hasn't responded, but his son, his <laughs> kid did. So good for him. <laughs> um, so email Danny and say, Hey, you know, this is what, you know, maybe with an idea, say, Hey, you know, how can I help? And I'm sure he would, will, you know, help you and do that. I mean, I know he's the one that's going to be like, Hey, Robert, here's all right. Here's some ideas for t- state. You know, maybe we should do this, this, this. Um, and he's going to listen to Danny. Um, he's not going to listen to me. He's not going to listen to Mike. He's not going to listen to random parents and fans. So um, that's the proper way to, you know, proper channels, the chain of command that you have to go through. Kind of like where you, when you're in the, uh, in the army and stuff, you got to go through chain of command. You don't just go straight up to the president. Uh, so um, that kind of stuff. So I would, I would just say, you know, contact Danny and say, Hey, how can, you know, here's some ideas. I, you know, this is stuff that I like. This is stuff I didn't like. And he can work with that. I think that would be just spam him. <laughs> yeah. And it's Danny Struck at GrecoCity.com. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. wrestling this weekend. We'll get back on it. Yeah. So Chad Chad, to answer your question, did did I enjoy it? I I can't say I disliked it. I mean, it wasn't I mean, for me as a coach, it wasn't too bad because we were there Thursday night. Obviously we went through some poor weather. It was I was less stressful once we got in there because there was less people to, you know, warm up with, to get in the building, things like that. So my stress level and anxiety was much less. And then if I had someone in the both sessions, I probably would have been just stressed all day long, but luckily, I guess not luckily, that's bad 
bad thing, <laughs> bad luck that we didn't have anyone in this first session. So, uh, um, we didn't get, you know, I wasn't stressed out and stuff and I got to go sit and watch wrestling that second session and kind of just sit there and enjoy and talk to people and things like that. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, if we talk about all the negatives and stuff, we talk about that on Thursday, Wednesday after the, the award show, let's get back. Okay. Uh, so back to the wrestling. Went- Let's start with uh, 106, then we'll go all the way down. We'll talk about the teams. Yeah, we'll go. Uh, you want to start? Let's start at heavyweight. Start at heavyweight. Yeah, give the heavyweight some love here. That was the lowest ranked wrestler to win it this year. Yeah. So shout out to Marco, Marshall Fishback from Rochester, their first state champ. Yeah. He, uh, he almost went. That was awesome, man. He, he huh? almost went. Uh, Jeremiah Harvey. He won two ultimate tiebreaker matches in a row to. to uh, to get a title, Harvey won what three or four overtime matches? At yeah, state. <laughs> uh, stayed stayed in good position the entire time. Um, got away. I mean, I think it's like one of those things. I'm sure the coaches you see it out there. You see a lot of these guys on um, these tight matches going. Uh, <laughs> I, you, you see a lot of guys uh, in these tight matches going for something bigger than they need to, and he would just escape, 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 and that's how he ended up winning it, right? Which is pretty cool. Yeah, great, good for them. Rochester with their first championship. Uh, he's only been wrestling three years, and uh, Platinov had had a great tournament. I, I mean, we'd seen Don Burgett wasn't in the bracket, so Platinov had a chance. <laughs> Burgett yeah, was his uh, kryptonite for some odd reason. Um, and and uh, <clears throat> Platinov's been really good. Yeah, you know he's, he's had good. I mean, and obviously, you know. He's only wrestled since he was a freshman. That that wasn't. He has wrestled for more than three years. Because I saw him at. Because I remember seeing him at uh, the Westfield Shamrock Duels. He, and they actually forfeited to Reeve when he was a freshman, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, I'd seen him as like he wrestled before. Um, he's just gotten steadily better over the years. But he put it together at the right time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was a medalist last year. Uh, it, we all kind of knew that he was he was there. Obviously, he was running pretty high. I mean, the rankings, I think a lot of times uh, people expect those to be the pickums. I didn't do as well in the pickums as I did in the rankings. Uh, <laughs> so it's a flip. But I think uh, you look at that, and that's res- that's very resort, uh, results-driven. Like, And he had lost to Dom Berger a couple times, so that puts Dom up, and Dom wasn't in the bracket, and, and Big Mike uh, it was. And he made a nice run. Real good semifinal match with uh, Leighton Jones. It was right number one. Yeah. Uh, Leighton, he'd, he'd lost a couple of close ones to Jones over the uh, past two years too. So that was, you know, finally, finally crack, you know, got the key. Obviously Jones went for a big throw. They really didn't need. And that was a, no. a good five pointer that kind of <clears throat> set the tone there. Josh Johnson or Jacob Johnson. Sorry, not Josh Johnson. Jacob Johnson, <laughs> uh, real tight, uh, yeah, wrong weight class. Real long, wrong weight class. About, about 100 pounds, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, a good Friday night match or Friday afternoon match with Theodore Sparks. Uh, tied it up late on, what was it, a stall call? Yeah, stall call about two seconds Set. to go. And uh, just holding, but again, like good position going at it. And then, uh, man, <clears throat> Johnson got a real good takedown right in the beginning of overtime. Won that one. Uh, won another 5-3 over Jellison. And then uh, lost the fish back at Ultimate Tiebreakers. Um, Leighton Jones, Liam Bagley was really good on Friday night. I thought it was 3-1. I thought they gave a stall at the end, but it says 3-0 on the bracket. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, <clears throat> kind of kind of a first-year wrestler. Um, Leah, Liam wrestled when he was a kid. His dad's a Division One wrestler. Uh, he's, a, he's a large man. He was one of my coaches. We talked about he's a colonel in the Army. Uh, he made some really good adjustments. I think late, late had been in both times, and then uh, it was pretty close. Yeah. Then Leighton over uh, Jose Smith or Jose Smith, Jose. three one. It's, it's Jose, Jose. Is that what they say, Jose? Yeah, like J O S E. So it says H O S I A. Yeah, I know, but that, that you pronounce it Jose, Jose. I got, I got uh, Kim down here. She speaks Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last wrestler at four years old. So uh, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, White Neck and Nate Johnson. Nate Johnson with a real quick takedown. Uh, White Neck with a quick reversal and fall. 
uh, White Knight Platinoff. Um, I think it was two two. What we say like thirty seconds left. Yeah. All White right, Knight shot right. a shot and Platinoff kind of spun behind. Behind. So. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad Jesse's done. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> I enjoyed watching Jesse wrestle. Yeah. And you're a coach. I'm sure those guys liked it too. You just got to adjust your weights. Evan Norwick <laughs> didn't like seeing him twice when Jesse was a freshman. <laughs> drew, him first round, uh, drew him in a duel and drew him at a semi or at uh, Al Smith first round. <laughs> that uh, <clears throat> 220, Christian Carroll is really good, man. Yeah. We, we all knew that. Uh, I know he uh, didn't pin his way through the state tournament. He had a tech fall in there and the eight two to two decision over Critchfield. So it started uh slowing down as it went, right? Started off, you know, wrestling thirty seconds his first tournament and got two decisions in his last tournament. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see what he does next year. So I think there's a lot of options on the table for Christian. Yeah. It's I mean, I know he has last summer he stayed that he was gonna go to Illinois to train. Obviously he's not committed there anymore. Um, their RTC. Penn has a really, really, really good RTC that he could go to, um, start taking some classes, I'm sure. Um, things like that. I don't know. Um, obviously, sometimes, you know, plans change. Maybe he comes back for a year and goes up to heavyweight. I mean, hit, I know he wrestled at what the Midlands. And yeah. He only wrestled one match, so maybe he, you know, looking at that, I mean... Maybe they're thinking, okay, maybe we need another year of high school. Maybe Russell heavyweight so we get used. Because I think I, I, he said he's going heavyweight, which I fully believe because I don't think he's going to yeah. ever get down. He's never going to weigh under 200 pounds again. <laughs> and he likes it, that, those things, those weight thingies. I think he plays with those a little bit here and there. <laughs> yeah, I think, and then I think he could be done. Um, he could be a one and done like Nick and Joe and Matt. Um, I was just happy that we were able to enjoy it for a year, right? Yeah. I think uh, it was a long time coming for sure. Felt like he's been in high school for about six years. Yeah. Uh, Critchfield, uh, who has been in high school for almost six years. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> a joke. He, he did a really good job. Um, I thought uh, he wrestled Christian tough. You want to add him? I think that's you know, obviously those top guys. And I know Hector's in here. Those those guys want people to go at him and wrestle him hard. Those guys enjoy wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Juan Grange, I know that they told me at the semi-state they felt Juan Grange was the uh, the toughest guy in the weight class. I know they train together a lot. Um, Juan had a really good tournament. Fall Friday night, uh, went over Hirely. Uh, Paul Clark, a really good tournament. How about that match Friday night, Paul Clark and Tommy Morrill? Yeah. That thing, that was an awesome match. Uh, got a reversal with, what, two, two seconds left for the dub? Man, um, Crown Point had so. Obviously, we're going in reverse order. I mean, Liam Bagley three one. I thought I thought it was three one three zero with uh, Leighton Jones is right in that match. Um, Paul Clark reversal beating Tommy Morrill, who ranked really high. Al Smith uh, runner up. He uh, dude, that was amazing. Uh, just kind of going down the list. Those guys had some huge uh, some huge wins, and they were like real close. I know we were talking about it. You know, and we'll talk more about the team race, but like when you look back, like, you know, Goodwin, Clark, Clark getting those wins, mm. uh, those are huge. Yeah. Um, uh, Brady Beck, 11 1 winner. He had Christian Carroll. Tough. I mean, that's tough. That's not the quarter bracket you want to be in. Obviously, Christian's an animal. Fort Wayne did really well here, man. You yep. guys showed out. Yeah, I got three out of four. Um, that, uh, the one that we lost, and Jackson bro, Weigart, the only unranked guy that made a uh, made it to the podium. So, congrats! You that, get the uh, Eli Stock Award for this year. Yeah, Jackson Weigart. Uh, Eli Stock was ranked. Stop yeah. that. <laughs> Mitchell Fart, Mitchell uh, Fishback is the Eli Stock Award lowest ranked guy to win a state title. Uh, Jackson Weigart, I should have listened. I know those guys uh, were saying he was getting better, and I mean thirty of thirteen. Uh, wrestled really well. That was a crazy match, though, man. Oh, yeah, and and, and Weigart was just uh, like one of those matches. Like, I wasn't even coaching. I was pulling my hair out. I couldn't <laughs> imagine how those guys felt. Yes. Um, dude, they, when they go into the third and uh, it's Hinton's choice and 
he already they think that cathedral coach thinks he's going down and they're telling Weigart stand him up and like Hinton just says now nah, I'm gonna take top and then only rides him for like 25 seconds no he doesn't <laughs> he rides him for like five I, I, was, I, like I was giving up I thought it was I was giving up the benefit of the doubt it was like one of the it was just a weird match um yeah. I seen uh Noblesville <laughs> uh-huh but uh, Hirely wrestled really well. I mean, you got that was tough, man. Just kind of ran us long range, and I think he uh, <clears throat> you ended up taking fifth. Critchfield uh, ended up beating Paul Clark. That was a good match in the third and fourth place match. Mm-hmm. Those guys are both sophomores, and we'll talk about the other twin in a second. But Crown Point's gonna be pretty decent up top coming back. Five second escape. Yeah, that man had me pulling my hair out. I was just thinking, like, if you were just gonna let him go, just. Choose down, they were gonna stand you up. You got yeah. a point. Uh, um, and it would have been, I don't. I know it was close. I don't know if he would have that would have made it tied, or he would have had, still had like, had like a one point lead or something. But they knew that. I think. I think it would have been like five five or five four. Yeah, or or six. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Uh, Chance Harris reversed the win. Uh, he he lost to Devin Kendricks at uh, IPO. Reversed yep. uh, a loss there. He re- two that, losses I, from like one from at at some might say he reversed another one. So he, I mean, he was wrestling well towards the end of the season too, which is good. We'll have to hear Marshall. I thought they did tell it on the Dane and Rex show. They uh, said that's he had what a- Dane said. I have to. I haven't checked the uh, podcast stuff. See if it's up yet. No, I, I know they didn't tell him the cheese top. I didn't say <laughs> the coaches. <laughs> no, no, no. The coaches They're did not down. tell him the cheese top. I'm not. I'm not putting it on them. <laughs> Somewhere the general was saying, "Take the top." Is it? I'm just joking. <laughs> general was yeah. uh, But uh, good weight class. I mean, obviously, if it's Christian Carroll's a one and done, it's pretty amazing to see him. You know, make a run of the title, and he had a nice gold jacket. Yes, yeah. they got they they got that straight out in 1987, I think. I thought you got that right on Happy Gilmore. <laughs> nice. Thought he won that thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, 195. Gabe Sowler is really good, right? Yeah, really dominant. Um, all falls. Uh, he obviously didn't want to get the full time on the mat. Um, over some good wrestlers. Obviously, Will Clark had a, a good tournament, finished fifth. Demarco <laughs> was fourth. Um, and then Barkett. Barkett's uh, pretty tough wrestler i know he's done he's got some you know had some good national some solid national success too so that was a uh, you know pretty impressive to be able to pin him that was his only loss of the year yeah um barkett or will clark rowan and hammond friday night those guys were going uh greco city yeah. I, I was shocked uh i was, oh, I, was, yeah, I, was I was like crazy. man i can't believe they're gonna go upper body with this guy he loves to throw boom takes him straight to his back uh again Adversity. I thought uh, Will Clark probably one of the more improved wrestlers of the year. Um, you know, came back and ended up getting a fall. I think he had like a body lock, feet to back. It was uh, crazy. And then Saturday morning, gets Sowers. Um, there was a four over one. Sam- uh, Samuel Sanders, Terre Haute Nor- uh, North Vigo, over Armin. How do you say it? Cool. Cool. Okay. Kuki Colt Ukian, something of that nature. Yeah, he uh, he'll be coming back. He was a four-way semi-state champ. Just kind of ran into a tough uh, draw there. Gage DeMarco, Max Broom, nine-six, pretty good Friday night match. Uh, Gage DeMarco, two-time semifinalist, uh, kind of put himself in a good spot. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of how the draw comes out sometimes. Uh, we talked about Barkett running to the finals, his only loss. Uh, we, <clears throat> I think we talked about it last week. Not your typical uh, Logan's poor guy. He just wrestled really well. I know he was representing the whole semi-state. Was he the only medalist from the Logan Sports semi-state this year? Uh, Might have been, but, I mean, he had a tougher – I mean, he wrote – Bovard was a qualifier. Wilman was a returning placer. And then Jordan was another returning placer there. So he had to – I mean, just to get to the finals at 195, usually you're not running into that kind of, you know, returning placers like that. So that's pretty impressive there. That uh, Jordan Purdy match – well, Jordan Christian Chavez match Friday night was really good. Um, Yeah. That was, that was a really good match, and uh, Christian will be back next year. And then Jordan and uh, Purdy was a really good match, 5-4. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know a lot of people had Purdy under the lights. I mean, I don't have all the pick in front of me, but I bet I'd be willing to bet a lot of guys had Purdy there. Yes. Then they go into the wrestle back. Will Clark gets a fall, 
And then he wrestles John Purdy, and, and that was a good match. Chippy match, uh, aggressive wrestling. And then Will Clark for the uh, body lock to a pin, which is pretty amazing. For a sophomore, he'll be coming back next year. John Purdy will be back, so possibly a state championship match because the four in front of them were seniors, right? Yeah. We did forget to mention about the Fort Wayne dominance at heavyweight the past couple of years. I, yep. You know, if if Carroll comes back and he's going to go heavyweight, he has to come to a Fort Wayne school if he wants to win it. If he wants to lose it, then he'll just stay somewhere else. So, Is that what you're going to tell me and him with the gable? Yeah. If you're heavyweight and you want to win a state title, come to Fort Wayne. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass you a state title at heavyweight, go through Fort Wayne, go through the Coliseum. <laughs> Forgot to mention that. Man, I had that good line going. So anyway, yes. Uh, yeah, great weight class overall. 195, usually you don't have that many returning placers and qualifiers and things like that at a weight class like that. And, you know, just competitive from the get-go. A lot of good matches. Um, and it should be, you know, a few of those guys are returning. Purdy's returning. Chavez returning. Uh, Alex Deming from Rochester. Maybe he'll be I met his dad this weekend. Good dude. Um, Corte Kuyan, um, Will Clark, Ronan Hammond. They all return, and there's probably some, there's some good 82s coming back, too. So that might be a little bit... Um, <laughs> Poppy's never coached a state champion heavyweight. He's barely even re- coached qualifiers. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's go to uh, 182. Another great weight class. This one is a little bit different because I had some young guns. Uh, two freshmen in the finals, which was on the semis. In the semis, that's what I meant. Yes, semis. Um, so that's I mean just a lot of good matches here too. Go. I mean, what's your thoughts here? Um, <clears throat> let's start the other way because I started with the. I thought <clears throat> I, I thought Jake Sue's uh, Luke Hansen real good Friday night match. Jake Sue's returning medalist. Luke Hansen really handled him. Uh, ended up getting a fall. Gunnar Henry, um, real talented freshman. Hunter Page, Hunter Page, returning medalist. Uh, Gunnar Henry with the with a good win there. And then ran that to the semis where he ran into Orlando Cruz. I thought Orlando looked really good in that match. We we talked all year about. Gunner cutting down a weight class uh, was going to help the Brownsburg, you know, run. I thought that um, obviously being in the semis was huge for him. Orlando Cruz looked really good. Beat a real tough Tommy Hannon, 15-6. Beat Reed Shorter, 20-9. Beat uh, Gunner Henry. So he was putting up points. Ended up losing in the championship. Reed Schroeder with Jaquan East. Both juniors. Those guys would both be back. Uh, Reed Schroeder was pretty big, man. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen him this year. He was pretty stacked at 82. Uh, VZ, VZ Alex Rose, VZ with the 72 win. Uh, Cooper Kinsler, another unranked wrestler in the bracket. I know there wasn't a ton. Wider than a door frame. That, that, that's uh, that's a that's a comment right there. Um, <laughs> Tilton uh, Hamilton Height Iron Bears with the win there. He had VZ second round. VZ with the 51 second fall. Drake Buchanan. And uh, the Northwood kid, both seniors, uh, can with the 55 second fall there. Great for Jake Simpson to be David Nash of East Central, get him a medal. I know he was there last year. 5 2, ran into Drake Buchanan, 10 3. Drake's tough, man. Ran it all the way to the championship, widened the gap with VZ. Uh, I know it ended up being a fall off the Al Smith, but it was a really good match before his ankle got rolled up under him. Mm-hmm. Um, Drake won the Mental Attitude Award, which was really cool. Jason Cook also, I believe, was a Mental Attitude Award winner. And, and he just went downhill since then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tried to wrestle me outside in the streets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, 4 1, good match with Cruz. Uh, I think it was 2 1 going to third. Uh, and, or, uh, yeah, 2 1, and then Cruz chose neutral. Got to take, then you can't got to take down and got a. Got a um, Frankie did not try to wrestle me. <laughs> uh, Frankie, a, he, was, uh, he was trying to get hot dogs winner? too. Um, Gunnar Henry VZ. Uh, I think that showed how like because Gunnar Henry had lost to VZ. Oh, I geez. think this this summer bad right. Oh, he's he. They wrestled like oh, they wrestled three, four, maybe five like times this off last off season, and VZ. Beat him pretty bad. The fr- it, he started closing the gap. I think it was end up being a two or three point match at like uh, Disney Duels, and so he obviously keeps closing the gap, which is very interesting. There, um, he won it. He won that one three two. Yeah. Um, and I think that's you know kind of shows how uh, 
you know, how good that he's kind of cut, turning that corner. Schroeder, a junior, uh, beat Simpson for fifth, thir- three two. Hanson, also a junior, beat Tilton, who's also a junior, seven four. So a lot of returning guys at that weight. It'll be interesting to see how those guys kind of uh, end up moving around in those weight classes up top. I mean, obviously, if you're heavyweight, you ain't going nowhere. There's no extra heavyweight. Yeah, there's only seven seniors at 182. So there's, I mean, there's going to be some guys spreading out. Some will probably stay there. I don't, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where they go. There's no Gabe Soller, you know, Sollers and the, the big guns at 97 all, all, uh, graduate so the top four um all re- graduate so that should be interesting to see where how these guys shake out obviously someone like uh henry was a 95 pounder and they cut him down um he did look a little bit skinnier but i'm sure he'll bulk back up to 95 maybe 220 um he's a yeah. big kid and i know and i know his dad's a pretty big guy so i mean i could see him by the end of his career being up at 220 um if not maybe I, even I, a lighter heavyweight I can see those Clark brothers going up uh, heavyweight 220 next year. Um, I mean, those are big football playing kids too. So I, I think those guys all move around. I don't know uh, where VZ's at on the on the weight there. I could see Orlando staying at 82. I think uh, I think he was like in between between 70 and 82, and then ended up going 82 this year. Orlando's pretty pretty cut, pretty big. Uh, VZ, I don't know what he you know weighs in at. He doesn't look like he he's not like you know Henry's pretty tall. Um, VZ's not as tall, so I, I mean, he could say in 82. I don't know what his weight's like. I don't know if he's pulling any, but um, it'll be interesting to see where he he lands. I guess I mean we'll, we'll find out pretty soon. You know, uh, folk style states coming up, some other national level events. So we'll see where these kids jump up, especially up here um, at these weights. Yeah, <clears throat> 170. Um, um, Brody Bowman is really good at wrestling. <laughs> yeah, he is. And Brooklyn, he is really good at wrestling. Yes. He uh, dominated the, the entire way. Looked like he was having the best time. Yeah. How about this picture uh, of last year's 170 champ? It was 170, right? Briar Hall. Briar Hall doesn't even look like he wrestled that day. <laughs> like hair off flowed. No sweat. No cuts. I mean, that might, that might be how Brody Bowman, Bowman looks next year. Yeah. So, yeah. Ready to go with the Broderick Bowman. I like that. Yeah, yeah, they didn't go government name this time. Uh, Brody Porter Eastern had a real good tournament. Um, two-time qualifier, punches through and uh, you know gets to the finals. Eastern doesn't get a lot of people in the finals, representing the Wayne. It's always good. So um, also also cut down a weight. Uh, he was at ninety or eighty-two much of the year, right? Yeah, yeah, he was at eighty-two for a little part, a bit of part of the season, and then cut down and actually cut into uh, a returning state placer at a sectional and regional. So that's uh, that, that takes some uh, kahunas to, to do that and end up winning both matches and, you know, putting himself in a good position. Uh, a, lot, a lot of good Friday night matches on this one. Uh, Spatner, the Ohio kid that came to Valpo, uh, got a 9-4 win. Aiden Farmer, a 1-0 win over uh, Clifton Johnson. It's in four, Wayne. Eastern. It's an Eastern of uh, – of South Bend, my friend. <laughs> it's Greentown, Indiana. It's about a Marion area, Marion Kokomo area, I believe. I met Chris Vargo this weekend too. Great dude. Yeah, I met uh, him too. <laughs> Clifton Johnson, uh, Aiden Farmer, real good one-zero match Friday night. I met the the right Evansville Rights Memorial coach, uh, real good guy. Sat behind us, real nice guy. He's been there for a long time. Uh, Brody Porter, pop Brody Porter, major. Uh, probably one of the bigger upsets Friday night. Uh, Cody Quaja goes down at JJ Brona Cathedral. I think uh, you know we talked about it and we, and we talked about it off the air. What McGinley does Friday night, um, and this is a stat me and Joe were kind of talking. There's a chance that McGinley will have his hundredth medalist next year. Like some like one hundredth medalist. I think he's what do we say seven away? Uh, yeah, he's he has ninety three medalists right now. Um, seventy six. <laughs> almost a 77 percent winning percentage on friday night that's that's stupid that is st- really bad and, and it's and obviously it's not just him he has a, a great staff with him um that and a lot of those guys are alumni but man you're, you're talking about a guy that's going out there and winning 70 almost 80 percent of the time friday night and you get matches like jackson weigar who had 13 losses getting a medal you have guys like uh jj braun 37 37 to 9 
beating a Michigan recruit, Cody Kwaja from Floyd Central. He was a Fargo All American this year, right? Yeah, double. Double All American. Right now, he has about 121 qualifiers, which would put him above Yorktown. He is above Yorktown as a coach with a number of uh, qualifiers. Or, yeah, he is 18th overall. If, 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 if Sean McGinley was Sean McGinley High School, he would be 18th all time in, in uh, state qualifiers. And poised that's, that's outrageous. Pass. Uh, and th- there's three schools there that are closed that will never get any more. They'll, p- they'll pass East Chicago, Washington, um, most likely next year with three qualifiers. But yeah, that's, I mean, we're talking this obviously off the air, and that's just like ridiculous. Uh, and, and that's the, I, I can't even explain it. I, I mean, it's the, number one getting that many qualifiers. I mean, he has, there are almost 300 schools. There are 290 schools that don't even have as many qualifiers as he does as a coach. Um, yeah. And that's, that's impressive. I mean, um, and you know, it's, you know, just, he has, he has, I mean, you can't say anything about it other than it. That's just, that's just un, unheard of. He has more state medals than most programs have qualifiers. Most is like, yeah, it's like 90% of the schools <laughs> have qualifiers. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. What do we say? Because he has ninety three medalist, um, which would be fifteenth. That'd be fifteenth overall. Um, and some of those are, are like way way back in the day. Like you're talking like fifties um, when there wasn't that many programs. Yeah, yeah. That's it, which is just again unheard of. Um, when they used to just wrestle in tights and no shirts. Yeah. Uh. Um, but it, it's match. It's literally matches like that. Like you, you see matches like JJ Braun, and I would be willing to bet there wasn't a lot of people that had picked him to win Friday night, and they find a way. He was pumped on that one. They were pumped. Yeah, I didn't get to see that match. It says right, at, they ushered us out pretty quick, and by the time we get back up to any kind of civilization, you know, whole round had gone by. But yeah, that was when I, you know, my phone started blowing up. Like what? What happened? You know. <laughs> so you're texting me because I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, whoa, what's going on here? So yeah, um, I know he was a little bit banged up, but at the same time, it that's still, I mean, yeah, getting that win, I mean, getting that kid on the podium, that's that's huge. Um, that's that's what they do at Cathedral, and I mean, I, I, I know that uh, that that who are your losses to? That always generates a lot of comments, and you know, people are very loyal to their coaches, which you know, I hope that the kids I coach are very loyal to me. Who, who um, do you want in your corner, not who your losses to, right? Yeah, yeah. Who are you? Yeah, who do you want in your corner? Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, but people are very loyal to their coaches, which I fully understand, and you should be. Um, but at the same time, those stats don't lie. Um, no. Uh, who? Who's? What team? It's not. And I hate to say that it's not just McGinley. It's. It's Bills. It's uh, Coursera. Yeah, yeah, it's Coursera. It's um, Seltzer. Seltzer. Yeah, I mean, you look at those guys that are there that would, you know, if they would go somewhere else and take over a program, they'd be pretty darn good themselves. But um, so it's not just McGinley. It's you know, it's his whole staff. But at the same time, that's you know, that's pretty pretty amazing what they do there. Yeah. Uh, Brody Bowman, uh, Anthony Cash, Brody Bowman obviously had an amazing weekend. Uh, Eli Johnson, just kind of uh, Fort Wayne at this at this weight also was one of the ones coming out of that that first session. Fort Wayne was on on fire. Like if you're a Fort Wayne semi state fan and you've been taking taking a lot of trash talk for uh, for years. all these years for about fifteen to twenty years, uh, um, this was your long. moment to shine. It's only been about ten before that people started catching on. We we were not doing as well. But it's been uh, hard. It's been a hard 10 years. Let me tell you. It's been a hard 10 years. <laughs> uh, Eli Johnson over Isaac Valdez. Um, Ryan Cast. Ben Phillips was a really good uh, Friday night. That was a four over one also. Uh, ben Phillips was ranked higher as returning medalist. Speaking of, uh, former state qualifiers for me. Wow. Dustin Chisholm won my first. Actually, my, my, actually my first state qualifier as a coach. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I didn't expect to see that name. <laughs> um, Landon Buchanan over Jesse Herrera. Highland, Highland's been getting by one state qualifier a year for the last couple of years, so it was good to see those guys there. That was my least favorite moment of the weekend. 
Uh, I thought that was. I thought that was the. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, nah, we won't. I don't even want to waste my breath on it. That's so upset about that. Um, Landon Buchanan over or Ben Phillips over Landon Buchanan, and then Bowman. So you had three of the three of the four semifinals were from the Evansville Semi State, which is uh, you know pretty impressive. Yeah, Evansville Semi State was pretty pretty darn tough. Um, Only one that wasn't was uh, Quaja, who was ranked number two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Daniel. <laughs> So yeah, good. I mean, just over a good weight class, uh, 160. Um, Fort Wayne owned this on Friday night, <laughs> did not own it on Saturday morning <laughs> or Friday, <laughs> Friday afternoon. So, um, yeah, uh, Conway law match in the finals, uh, the two double stalls were, did not do anything. Double stalls are the worst call in wrestling. Don't do I, I, you know, I- yeah, I, I don't think it changed anything. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to, like, question any officiating. Like, obviously, I'm not an official. If Danny Danny is an official, if that's his call, go for it, man. But I agree with what Vincessa said on Saturday night. Did it – like, those guys have wrestled so many times. Like, if that's the match that they want to have and they want to decide it in overtime, then, like, who, who are we to say, hey, man – like, none of those – like, neither of them were doing anything, right? They were both working from his position. I'm not saying not doing anything. Let me rephrase that because that sounds bad. Um, both of those guys were working position, and they were, like, not trying to make a mistake. They're just very high-level guys. Yeah. Um, both are D1 guys, right? Cade Law's going to Purdue. Yes, and Conway's going to Missouri. But And, and even so, they – I mean, when I think of – in that kind of a match, it they weren't avoiding wrestling. They were just, yeah. it was a high level match. Two guys are evenly. I mean, you try shooting on Cade Law. He's a freaking brick sh- house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, Conway is, you know, I, you know, I, me trying to grab Cade Law's leg and hold on to it. Good luck, you know. Um, so you got to really, you know, pick your spots. And they've wrestled a lot at not only during the season, but they're also, I think they're both Invicta kids. So they wrestled yeah. a lot there. They've made each other better. Obviously, they, they, they open up probably in the practice room, but at the same time, it's yeah. If they were avoiding wrestling, ding them. But they weren't avoiding yeah. wrestling. They just were, you know, hand but, fighting, holding good position, and not wanting to I make think, a mistake. It's the biggest match of their life. <laughs> yeah. And and this can go for any matches. And I, I thought the fishing was. I mean, there were some spots here and there, and I'm sure everyone has opinions. And it's not my place to be like, oh, you know, this guy's right, this guy's wrong. Obviously, there's a system for those guys to get there. And they, their representatives, that's the um, best of the state. Like the system that's in place, you have to go through a lot of uh, years and you have to have a certain amount of points to make it to that level. Uh, and you have high level officials that are there. I mean, Jim Russell's there. Jim Russell's one of the best. Like when he was at Indiana versus USA at Brownsburg, like one of the best. Mm-hmm. But um, I think there was a lot more stalling incidents that weren't called than what I saw there, I guess, is my amateur opinion of that. Yeah. Um, I, I, It didn't end up doing anything. It didn't end up changing the match. It, it still went to overtime. I don't think any of them were like, okay, cool. I'm going to have to attack here to put myself in position or uh, risk. But um, I would hate to see, like, if it went to ride outs. And then you have to go to that, like, ultimate tiebreaker. If you're dropping down to an ankle. And then you are losing on a stall call. You know, I, I don't know. It, it's just weird. Like generally, I think through the tournament uh, at the levels I was at, which was regional, semi-state at East Chicago, regional Crown Point and state, I thought the officiating has been really, really well done. I haven't walked out and been like that guy. I mean, I'm sure. I know as a moderator on the board <laughs> that there were some disagreements. <laughs> I, I hope. I, I think that. I think uh, Jared. I, I, I felt like um, the crowd was getting a little antsy in that one and I think that took away from those guys because I think that like you you don't want to take away from what they're doing I think the crowd in those two matches and like some of the other stuff was kind of taken away from the finals and it was like dude that's crazy man mm-hmm. but that that was a really good match it wasn't the most like uh it depends what you like about wrestling if you want to go see you know um yeah you think that Danny you think that you should hear some of the calls I get. <laughs> uh, um, but I think like uh, you get um, if that's your cup of tea, like hand fighting and good positioning, 
Or are you like, uh, you know, what Ricky St- Clark and Robert Samuels did? You know, like whatever your type of wrestling you want to watch, and obviously there's both. Um, those guys are pretty high level. I, I remember I said that before about Cornell to Eric. I said they're the most boring type of wrestling. He's like, what, you don't like guys that have good defense and good scrambling and are tough on top? He's right. <laughs> like, no, it's not my type of wrestling, but good for him. It's not, it's not um, fan friendly wrestling, but hey, it huh. wins. You know, win, it's it's called win, it's winning wrestling. I do like winning wrestling. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cody Goodwin, uh, Jay Conway semifinal. That thing was that was uh, that was a match, man. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Cody Goodwin coming back. I know System was kind of giving me a hard time, so I was picking against this guy. I don't. I kind of shied away from making predictions on the show a couple years ago, yeah. but I, I mean, maybe I lean, was leaning Cody Goodwin's way, but I thought that was going to be a really good match, and it ended up being a really good match. Mm-hmm. There was a uh, right at the end, real close takedown, goes to overtime. Conway gets the takedown. Goodwin had a, a really good one Friday night with Chris Newman. We talked about Friday night matches. Oh, uh, almost a four over one ba- uh, inside trip to his back for four. Has to fight back, uh, tied up eight eight, sent to overtime. Those dudes were spent. There was a, a picture of those guys at the end of the match, and they were just exhausted. Yeah, those guys left it out there. Yes, it is. I, I think it was on uh, Punch Wars stuff. They yeah, they left it out there. That was uh, that was a crazy. Um, Land, was... Landed Bo Cave Law, two one Ultimate Tiebreaker. Uh, really good match. <clears throat> Landon Bo Cody Goodwin in the the third and fourth place match. Really good match. That was a match I was excited to see because those guys are both uh, put you in some positions you don't really want to be in. They're thinking they're big move guys. You're kind of unpredictable. You don't know what's really going to happen there. Um, dang man, we're, we're working the other way. We're about you're about thirty minutes late, Danny. There we go. Yeah, That's the picture. <laughs> those dudes, those guys went to war, man. And, yes. Like, not to diminish war, but um, <laughs> those guys went out there and left it on the line. Uh. Caden Long, we talked about that four over one overtime win over uh, Charlie Eusen. Not not the best weekend for the Newcastle semi state. They're gonna have to regroup. Who who's over there? CIA and those guys are gonna have to re, regroup and come back stronger. You know. Yeah. Who's the other academies in the city in the yeah, Newcastle I mean, semi state? Got I mean contenders and co- nah, those guys. Those guys are uh, those guys are out towards Mooresville now. <laughs> there's there's a lot of indie guys that go there too. I think I don't. Know. I mean, you got you got outlaws. Uh, outlaws, yeah. Those guys are gonna have to regroup and and come out, man. Yes. Uh, Logan Farnell, as advertised, looked good. Him and Kate Law three one was really good. Joe getting the dub Friday night over Leo Calderon, Jared Landes. I know. Uh, what was it? His sophomore year, he told me he was gonna be pretty good. I think at that point he he almost had as many losses as he had wins, and I was like, oh okay, cool man, <laughs> like I'll put him on the watch list, Joe. <laughs> and then he here he is, a couple good wins his sophomore year, then kind of junior year had, I think junior year is like he's starting to kind of battle with these better guys, and yeah, you know, and he went from you know he went from one thirty eight to one sixty, and I was a little bit worried that he's gonna be undersized, but he was not undersized by any means. So he, yeah. he's one of those types of kids that his mom's really small, his dad's a you know big so i'm like you, you never know what you're gonna get with him you're like you know he's cutting down to 38 a little bit i was a l- little bit of a i mean a cut wasn't he managed it pretty well but then i'm like man eh, 52 might be and he's like playing 65 70 i'm like yeah 60 will be your, where you need to go but it was he's one of those guys i you never know when they're gonna uh but, explode oh, and, be, uh, and gain 30 pounds a lot like Marshall Fishbeck, he had to work his way into the lineup and work his way there, and mm-hmm. and uh, just hard work pays off, man. I'm I'm really happy for you, and I was happy for him. He always seems like a real nice kid. Yep. Uh, he, he had Cody Goodwin in the quarterfinals. Cody's pretty good. I mean, we knew that. Away. We got the first takedown. <laughs> Cody likes to go takedowns though. Then he then he goes yeah, to it work. Doesn't matter. We got the first. <laughs> we still <laughs> took him down. I was like, okay, we're gonna, you know. And obviously, you know, I was like, hey, we can't let him cradle you. Don't let him cradle you. And did he get a cradle? Yes. <laughs> um, Bradley Pittman uh, was pulled from the bracket, which is unfortunate for Plymouth. Uh, and then Eli Quasi Barth uh, for North White, which I believe is their first day qualifier, right? Yes. I mean, kind of straight participant state qualifier. He was there Friday night, not the draw you want. Drew the state champ, returning champ. 
Uh, Chase Wagner, a couple, and Duke Myers, a couple really good sophomores, and Duke Myers getting on the stand for the first time. So Duke Myers ran it back to fifth place, uh, avenged one of his losses to uh, Farnell, but that that uh, wrestle back was the Fort Wayne semi state, which is pretty cool for you guys. Yeah, it's interesting, and and I know this happened here where uh, Farnell beat Myers at last week at semi state, and Myers reversed that, and that happened at the seventh place match. Um, happened a couple other times where some semi-state matches got reversed in the constellations, which is a, it's just one of those weird rounds of you're wrestling for pride and it's hard to kind of get up for that round and kind of want to wrestle. And, you know, it's just, it's a weird round when you go there, it's you wrestle in your last matches of the season, maybe your career. So I always think North- that that, weird, that round, you just get a lot of weird results. Jason said North White had a, a big guy that did that qualified against Caston. You know what, Jason? There's a website for that. Oh, we said it. Um, 152. Sammy Goyne. Uh, 4-3 win over Delaney Roman in the finals. Uh, Delaney back-to-back uh, finals against Crown Point. I uh, would be one of the bet he's going to try to avoid that next year. Look to get his championship. So he'll be about, what, 220? Yeah. He went from 38 to 52. He'll probably be 170. Yeah. So maybe him and Goodwin. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sammy is, with probably the more entertaining interviews. Yeah, so he is but, right. Uh, he, I'll, I'll admit when Jason Cook's right, this was this is one time a year. He's right. Uh, Jonathan Sandberg was a two-time fourth-place finisher. Uh, Scott Willoughby in, 90, in 87 was their first qualifier. Oh, man. So they've, so, they've, they've had a couple. It's been a they don't get there often, but yeah. So he's um, right. <laughs> Sammy that, likes that to stall in the finals. <laughs> yeah, his interview, yeah. He uh, he said, yep, I'll stall in there at the end. You know, everyone knew it. So, But he was good, man. Sam Sam couldn't stop smiling. I was happy for him. He had a tough semifinal last year. Uh, Roman will be back. Tyler Jones, uh, real good Friday night matchup. Or he, uh, no, he got a fall Friday. Real good semifinal or quarterfinal matchup with Mitchell Betts, who had a real good Friday night match uh, with Tyce DuPont. We kind of circled that one. Tyce DuPont, a middle, uh, freshman, sophomore champ. Mitchell Betts wrestling real well, 3-1 win, then lost to Tyler Jones. That was Jones' first time in the semis, right? Two, that was his third medal, first time in the semis? Yes. Yes. Delaney Rollman, uh, <clears throat> Anthony Reinhardt rematch, uh, defensive fall, kind of packed him on a shot. I believe so, right? No, he got him on the legs. He like, twisted and, and kind of got him in a weird position, got a fall there. And then went to the finals uh, with a pretty big win over Tyler Jones. Sam going with a fall over Corbin Watson. I believe that was the first win of the first match, right? Sammy was the first one done? Yeah. He had a rematch. Uh, Chase Leach, Nick Cicerelli. Cicerelli, a 3-0 winner. Uh, going Cicerelli rematch from uh, Carnahan, which was a major, uh, another major. Cody Glithero and uh, Aiden Costello. I know those guys were talking about that. that was a close match at um, – ISW, IHSWCA state, uh, team state. Pretty good match there for the freshman, uh, 4-2. Glitter was uh, re- undefeated at that point. Hunter May, Alex Curry. I thought that was going to be a little bit closer. It would be a 9-1 win for uh, Hunter May. Yeah, it was close a little bit early. It was early on, it was close, and then uh, May kind of started pouring on a little bit late. And if I recall correctly, I was right in front of us. Um, so, yeah, that was – and then, yeah, Glitter May was a 3-1 overtime. The wrestleback was crazy too. There was a lot of like interesting results in the wrestleback. I think you're right. Betts over Reinhardt two one was a real good match. Cicerelli taught tiebreaker over uh, Hunter May. Reinhardt over May. So a lot of guys returning there. What do you got uh, coming back? You got Reinhardt a freshman, May a sophomore, Betts a sophomore, Dupont Jr., <laughs> Roman Jr., Bisping, yeah. uh, Leach, going to. Costello, uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of guys returning that, and that they're going to be. I, I don't see a lot of them as being really big at 52, so you could see a lot of some of them down there. You could see, you could see a decent number go up to 62. So, uh, obviously, Roman will probably put on 50 pounds. Yeah, those guys <laughs> like the lift, man. Because what did, what did his brother go? Did his brother go 70 to 220. Yeah, his last um, year. Yeah, Delaney went 
because Delaney had, I think, bad itch Friday night. Yeah, so he's had a bad run with Crown Point. <laughs> so I think I believe he had bad itch Friday night as a freshman. <laughs> and then he had Jesse in the finals last year, had Sammy in the finals this year. So Yeah, so he's I mean, gonna want to get away from Yeah, I mean he no matter where he goes, if he goes up or down, I mean yeah, Crown Point's are turning a lot, so it might be tough. <laughs> yes, the point. Where's Crown Point not going to qualify someone? He might have to go down to like I, I don't know, thirty two maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Because you got Fraser coming back, he'll probably be thirty two. Yeah, okay. They so lose no. thirty eight and forty five, so maybe fifty two is where you need to be. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, yeah, good weight class overall. Obviously, you know, um, it's pretty entertaining to hear. I actually didn't hear. It. I heard it afterwards. Cause I had to go to the restroom, but some good matches there with uh, Yo and um, one forty-five. Um, Ryder Searcy, he's a pinner. <laughs> we, hey, I told you guys though, right? Judo yeah. guy. Uh, not only is he a pinner, bro. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see a lot of Ryder Searcy matches, but he was out there hitting assassins on everybody. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Um. Really good matches. Got a, a big fall over Anthony Oliver Friday night. I think he hit him with an assassin. Uh, him and Toby Abbott, a barn burner, 11-10. So for everyone that was upset with uh, Cade Law and Jay Conway's match, those guys are putting up 21 points. Yes. Uh, got taken down by Aiden Torres and then hit a headlock. Then in the finals, just uh, he went for it, man. He went headlock on Hayden Watson. Hayden Watson was just uh, on a mission, man. Yeah. No, that's one of those like uh, things people don't like to hear. But Hayden Watson, um, Matthew Coons in the semis. Wow, that was a wild match. Yes, it was. That was a, a wild scramble in the first period. Some points put up on the board that are, you know, and then that just kind of set things into a tailspin of. Yeah. Uh, and you it's know, tough. Yeah, that, that that's a tough position to be in. You know, you're down by what you know. He was down by five or six at that point. Five, uh, yeah, five. five. I think you look at um, was he at five or seven? One seven one after that. Yeah, seven one. Yeah. Think about that, like in your everyday. Like a lot of us didn't wrestle the state finals. Think about that, like you're the pressure for Matthew Koontz, who is a runner up and a third placer, and you're wrestling a guy that's a high level D one guy that. You had beat this year, but like probably through their career, probably split. I know those guys are you know pretty close, but man, you um you go down seven one, like that changes the way you're gonna wrestle that match. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you you don't wrestle the match the same way. Yeah, yeah. That's a. I mean, that's not you know your game plan is okay. We you know with this this this, and you know I mean that just I mean. You, Scoring seven points on Hayden Watson, good luck. I mean, he's a high level wrestler. Yeah. He's a D one guy. Um, at that level, you know, you're down seven one. I, I I I'm gonna go out on a limb. There's probably one or two guys in the state that can probably score seven. You know, come back from that on someone like Hayden Watson. One of them's Jesse. You know. Yeah. Um, and they're and they're not and they're both and they're not all not in that weight. Yeah. Um. So. And and Koontz, Koontz has a big move uh, possibility, but at the same time. I don't yeah, think, it, it, I mean, it, it, it messes with you mentally more than anything. I think you could tell kind of in the corner, you could tell uh, Matthew just, you know, mentally, it's like, holy cow, what just happened, you know, these, you know, holy cow, what happened. And now, you know, instead of refocusing and say, okay, I guess got chip away, chip away, you know, and that, that's hard for a kid. You know, you're, he didn't know, he, looking on his face, it was just a lot of things in that match that, you know, cause things to not go. I mean, I guarantee if they wrestle again, it won't be a major decision. No, I, I yeah, I, I, it was just weird. And I think like, uh, you look at that 11, three, um, it changed, it changes the way Watson has to wrestle him. Like Watson doesn't have to force your way in. Now, now you are forcing some big moves. It's tough, man. Uh, that, that was a tough one. I, you know, the brackets weren't favorable to that. You know, they were favorable to writer Cersei. Obviously he did the work. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people had uh, Aiden Torres there. Um, and maybe they didn't have – they, they might have had Toby Abbott ahead of Ryder Cersei. I'm not sure. But Ryder Cersei, like, took advantage of his position. He'll be back next year. Um, but that that was an interesting match. Kuntz, uh, a nice win Friday night over Nate Lomick. 
Ben Miller, Lakeland, got a fall over Gunner Cross of Knox. A couple of small schools going at it. How many times do you think that's ever been said in the state's history? We're going to have a Friday night matchup of Knox and Lakeland. Probably about one. <laughs> yep. Bass Lake versus uh, Lakeland. The La- Are they the Lakers? If not, man. Yes, they are the Lakers. Chicks. All right. Um, Brody Arthur, Nick Tatini, uh, real good match Friday night. Both uh, Tatini's second time at state, Brody Arthur, third time, two medals now. Um, that was huge. That was one of the ones, I think, uh, that was the last match of the night, and Crown Point had only lost Bidley up to that point. They were looking to get 10 medals, and uh, Brody Arthur shows up for the state finals. He had a good match with uh, Hayden Watson, also 4-3, after kind of probably with disappointing, a little bit disappointing semi-state. Yeah, he I'm just, sure that's what they thought. I didn't think he looked good at semi-state. It looked like he was just forcing things, putting himself in bad positions. I was like, uh, I mean, Ben Miller beat him pretty handily, um, and you know, just stayed in good position. And kept, you know, Arthur just kept putting himself in bad positions, and I obviously that stuff got cleaned up because he looked real good uh, this weekend, um, beating a good Tatini right there with Watson, and then end up uh, getting to the sixth place match where I didn't see what happened other than it looked like he dinged his head and injury defaulted. So, um, and obviously got revenge on uh, Miller. So. Um, and then, yeah, he, and then yeah. I, was, I was happy for Blaze Garcia, too, down at the bottom, man. Uh, a couple guys that were uh, at state, neither of them had a medal. Brad Cooper from Zionsville, Blaze Garcia. I was happy to see Blaze get a, a big win. You know, he ended up losing to Torres 6-3. I think it was uh, 4-3, and then Torres got a late takedown. But, you know, I'm happy for those guys. I know, you know, Chris, obviously, um, you know, big on the board and – I was happy for Blaze. Yeah. So, uh, 138. Um, Jesse Mendez didn't. Uh, he must be allergic to to Dolomir mats or something. So he tried to spend the least amount of time possible on the mat this weekend. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I know we talked about it on Saturday night, me and you, and I, I know we talked to Hector. But man. Uh. Yeah. If you guys want to know, Nick, Nick, uh, that's Nick. You can forward your emails to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I thought his speech afterwards was great. I don't, I don't remember a lot of times. Obviously, I don't, I don't remember what Chad's was. I think it was pretty brief. I know Asa had some good ones, but I thought Jesse did a really good job on the mic, and you know, it was, it was awesome. I, I thought that the whole thing was really good. I thought it was a good way to. To finish out a great career, uh, I think I posted today. Looking back, like, you know, obviously we're going to have it with uh, – right now you're going to be in comparison. Like you're going to say, well, you know, Jason Sertz just won a national title or, you know, Nick Lee won a national title. We don't know what Jesse's college and international career is going to be yet. But like Jess, straight on high school, he might have the best high school career across the board and someone's like well this guy pinned everybody i was like i would bet his pins are up there pretty high yeah. i'd be willing to bet he has a lot of falls also he has uh, like he, two or three he's, yeah he's won a ton of great uh weight classes like cole solomy is uh is a really you know really good he had four losses this year and they're out of jesse mendez um he's got three medals now i think he's what he got a, a fifth uh, a fourth or a third and a second now. So he's looking for one more or seventh and fifth or, th- or seventh, fourth and second. But I think that's one of those things you look back and that's going to be uh, a match that you're going to say, uh, like I was there for when Jesse Mendez won it. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't, I think that we look at stuff with the uh, hindsight. Well, he was, you know, this guy was really good. And I, I have a lot of respect. Obviously we do the site, we do these shows like you needed an Alex Sertzis and Blake Maurer to have a, a Chad Red and Angel Escobedo. Those guys kind of said you needed a you know Alex Sertzis to go into coaching, to have a Jesse Mendez. You know, like I think a lot of those things help help set the table. But I think Indiana's at its highest right now. Yes. Um, at quality wise, like I think that we're producing at a high quality right now. Like this is probably the most we've had high level guys at the NCAA tournament. And not just the NCAA. If you look at every level of college wrestling right now, Indiana's putting high-level guys there. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a um, lot of NIA, I mean, um, NIA Tech just 
qualified a bunch. So did Marion for NC for uh, NAIs. I think that's this weekend. If I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, and then you know, Indianapolis, Wabash, Manchester, trying doing well. It's one of those things that we're getting, we're having success at all those levels. And, and women, yeah, yeah, so yeah, and women's. <laughs> Don't forget. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah so, and, and I think that when so you look back cool. at that, it's going to be crazy. And you see them like out signing autographs, yeah. like taking time with the kids. Like, dude, it's it's awesome. Him like, and Zeke were looking uh, for a uh, a sharpie to sign a headgear. Um, yeah. They asked, they're like, no. yeah, so. No, 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 not, not Watson. That was, uh, I was, I, I was saying that, uh, I get some officials get upset. They think I'm too critical at times. <laughs> so I, I try to stay away from criticizing. So I don't have to hear all that nonsense. Um, Cole Salmi, Ashton Hayhurst, uh, really good match. Gavin Garcia. He's only had three losses all to crown point. Nothing against Nick. I was just saying that I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> Uh, Gavin Garcia, three losses, two to Jesse, one to Tatini. He's probably going to, I mean, he's graduating, but he's probably happy he doesn't have to wrestle Crown Point anymore. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, Friday night, uh, <clears throat> tech nice. fall over Evan Roudenbush, a tough freshman. A really good match in the quarters. We were in the elevator with one of the newspaper uh, reporters, and they were like, yeah, you know, you think uh, – Bryce Lowry and Jesse is going to be a good match. I'm like, ah, I think, you know, Jesse's pretty good. I'd be, sh I think this place to go nuts if he loses. He's like, he's been wrestling real tough. I, I think it's going to be tight. I was like, ah, he has a pretty good one Saturday morning, man. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. Uh, two, one. I don't know how uh, Lowry didn't get a reversal there at the end. Uh, it looked like he was coming out the back. I thought he was going to pull that one out. Lowry got another shot at it. That could be the finals match. And I think uh, that two, one, everyone would be pretty excited because it was right there. Uh, Cameron Clark, uh, a good win Friday night over Carson Johnson. Then he had Ashton Hayhurst. Hayhurst and uh, Lucas Clement Saturday night, uh, Friday night was pretty good. Hayhurst over Clark. Pretty interesting across the board. Um, Hayhurst reversed a uh, decision from the semi-state in the third and fourth place match over Garcia, right? Um, yes. Yeah, they, uh, Garcia beat him last week. Beat him pretty handily from a, if I recall. I mean, like not mean like major or anything but i think like three or four so um that's it. yeah another one that was i know that kind of caught my eye of who re that reversing a loss or a match cool. cole solomon had to have a tournament to get there right yeah he had to be a real tough cash turner uh friday night return a uh, medalist from two years ago and then he had to beat bryce lowry a returning medalist and then he had hayhurst who's incredibly tough and then he had mendez in the finals pretty pretty impressive for cole yeah, yeah. I mean, a medalist, two-time, medal, three-time medalist now, Lowry, and then, you know, Hayhurst was the was the easiest one if you want to call that because he was only a one-time qualifier for, before this year. <laughs> so yeah, just to get to then you get to wrestle Jesse Mendez just for the ultimate boss. I mean, you beat the you know you beat Glass Joe, you beat uh, <laughs> yeah. all those guys, and then you get Tyson. Like, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Soda Popinski. And all those guys talk about Mike Nelson punch out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, then you had a real good match on Friday night. Uh, Luke Gonzalez uh, and Dylan Tuttle, two seniors, Tuttle, the overtime winner. That was a, that was a real good one. That that one helped seal it for Fort Wayne to get twenty eight. Pissed in hurricane. <laughs> oh jeez, yes. <laughs> um, Pissed in Honda. Yeah, yeah, Piston Honda. Yeah, Piston Honda. I always hate that magic guy, the one that did the magic, and then oh, I, he always kicked my butt. <laughs> yeah, that 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 Gonzalez Tuttle match was really good, uh, really fun. Um, Tuttle gets after it, and you know, yeah, and, and and he got you know, yet Cody got one over Cathedral, which that should yeah. be worth like double team points. If you beat Cathedral on Friday night, you should get like double team points. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, that was Street Fighter, man. I think it's something different, my man. <laughs> I had to give us – OC told me one time she was real good at Street Fighter, and we went to this, like, place in Griffith. They used to have arcade games. I said, Dad, I'm super good at this game. I was like, oh, man, I uh, never even played it before. And then I smoked her. <laughs> Street Fighter, she thought she was going to get me a Street Fighter. That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, oh, Bald Bull, Glass Joe, 
King Hippo. Oh, King Hippo. That was King right. Hippo. Yes. Yeah. So nah, he was he, he, he was weak. Piston Honda. There we go. <laughs> That's his. <laughs> um, 32. Anthony Ball with an incredible tournament. Zeke Seltzer, obviously an amazing career. His one loss uh, this year to Mendez. His other two to Moran. He's going to leave high school with three losses to three D1 guys, nationally ranked guys. Yeah. Uh, his tournament, I mean, that was a tough one to get um, Cheney Chef in the in the semis. You know, that was a returning uh, championship match from last year. Two Cathedral guys got uh, returning championship matches in the semis. I think they're, they're in cahoots against uh, McGinley. Yeah. Obviously, they, they're pretty close, I think, to the, you know, Cathedral's pretty close to the headquarters, so they might have to have a meeting soon. <laughs> uh, Anthony Ball, uh, Elijah, how about we just start? Elijah Anthony Brady Ace, and we talked about that being a really good match. I thought that um, that Friday night match was awesome, 4-3. Uh, everyone, I think, was like, oh, man, that's going to knock uh, Brownsburg out of the team race. And then you look up, and they're, they're probably putting them enough points that would uh, win a lot of years, just not this year. Yeah, yeah, we figured that out. We were going over that uh, the other day or yesterday. I think we were texting. And I'm like, they had won like all but like a handful of years in the past 100 years of wrestling. With, yeah, with 105 points. Just not this year. Yeah, <laughs> and and they did it without uh, Ison, who I'm sure that like I mean that's not the draw you want. Obviously, Elijah Anthony is really tough. But then um, they also lost the state champ at the semi state. They probably yeah. they were expecting big points from. Yeah, if, if Ison wins that match, I mean, I'm, it, he's he might be he he's likely under the lights because he already beaten Ball before twice. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, twice. I mean, obviously, Ball's wrestling real well, so you know you can't take anything away from him. But you're you're looking at Ison winning that match. He's under the lights, and that's another twenty points. <laughs> and they Anthony, still don't win, oh. and they're still fifty points away from. So they need two more uh, Isons. I mean, you throw yeah. in Logan Miller. State champ. Let's give him a state champion to 25 points. You're still 20 points away. It's crazy. They, they need another. They need two Logan Millers. They need two champs. <laughs> and um, need, yeah. It was. It's. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna get some time at the end to talk about this team race, which is crazy. Yeah. Um. Anthony Ball had a really good tournament. Tech fall Friday night. Fall over Wyatt Crazier. Wyatt Crazier and uh, Brevin Thine. Real exciting match. 12-8. Put up 20 points. Uh, Anthony Ball pinned him in 252, and then 9-1 major over Elijah Anthony. At one point, I was like, man, uh, maybe Will Clark's going to beat Gabe Sollers. The Crown Point's just on this incredible run. They're putting all their guys in the semis. Like, yeah. they they woke up ready. Uh, they, uh, yeah, uh, that would have helped also. Uh, he ran into Zeke in the finals, 10-5. I mean, Zeke's just a different animal. Anthony Ball will be back next year. Uh, Cheney Chef and uh, Elijah Anthony third and fourth. Chef with the win there, so he has two, two, three now. Um, where he falls at next year is going to be interesting, you know. Like if he doesn't win one, does he go down as like one of those Vinny Casaros best to never win it? Mm -hmm. I mean, how are you? How do you look at? How do you pace those? I know some people look at national stuff. There's some guys that have some All-American status that, that never won a state title. I mean, obviously, we talked about Cody Kwaja earlier. But that guy could have four medals next year going to Division One North Carolina State. It would be interesting to see where he falls at weight-wise, not uh, placement-wise. Yeah. Um, 32 is uh, another good weight. Another good weight for the Wayne, too. Logan Ullman, a win over Bryce Denton. That was a good match, 6-4. I think I think they were telling him to to cut him early, and I think he he rode for a little bit and didn't cut him right away. And I think he ran out of time. He was real close to a takedown at the end. Zara Walker a two one win over Landon Birch. That was off Florida Mendez he lost to Mendez at State. Uh, sectionals. I'm sorry, uh, Eric. Sectionals, regional, semi state, state. He said, "Who was telling me his losses too?" Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that. Uh, Zara Walker uh, Birch match was really good. I can't remember the detail. I know it was they were really close to scoring. I think Walker got like a late reversal and right out. I think Birch was getting ready to write him out in the second. I want to say the second period. I might be wrong, but then um, it was a really good match and Birch couldn't get the takedown there. So 
Um, Birch had a real good career. Three three uh, times to state. Lost two couple close ones. I don't know if I have his... I can't bring up his profile right now, but yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a real good match. We almost got above above uh, five, you know, the even. So... Um, and Dylan Stroud, a real good win over Mason Anthony. Dylan Stroud, a uh, couple-time medalist. Um, he ended up taking seventh, beat Ullman there. Crazy and Zara Walker, a couple of real tough sophomores for fifth. So a lot of guys were cheering out of that one too. Yep. And, you know, one thing definitely, I mean, I said this, I tweeted this out, but also Zeke and Jesse are like awesome, awesome kids. Um, their interviews kind of showed that. Um, obviously, have some good parents. And, you know, been, you know, raised in, in, you know, they're in that spotlight and they, you know, like, like I said, they were, they were looking for a uh, Sharpie to sign a, a headgear for, I, I assume I, I were giving it to a kid or something. Um, pretty cool for them to do that. And, you know, it's great kids and, you know, people that, you know, you want your kids to look up to. And, you know, I'm even kind of debating taking Rocco to, uh, to the, to the Pittsburgh wrestling classic. Uh, just so he can hang out with kids like that to kind of see, you know, not only are they good at wrestling, but they're they're also great people. And more than anything, you know, they're going to do well in life, whether they ever win, wrestle another match or win another match. Yeah, and I think uh, I, I think I said something on the, when I was on the air at the regional about, um, and Christian was there. He had two of the top guys in the country. Christian Carroll, Jesse Mendez, two number ones in the country, two top recruits. I think Christian's what a top 10 and pound for pound. Jesse's two pound for pound. Yeah. Um, and they're two of the nicest kids you'll, you'll ever meet. And then you said like, then you added in Zeke, who's one of the nicest kids you'll ever meet. Like he was, I think they tweeted out today that he went and it was, uh, at CIA, like signing autographs and talking to the kids. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, that's what you want. That's what you want from, uh, the leaders in your community. I thought this year in the interviews, uh, and, and we're about to get to 26, but um, 38, how many times do you hear guys like talking about like, you know, their teammates and they're happy. Jesse, I was happy to see Logan Frazier get there. He's worked so hard. Logan Frazier, like, I was happy Jesse Mendez was, you know, he's really helped me get to the point where I'm at today. Like you don't normally hear that. You you hear about like my parents, my my coaches, my teammates. Sometimes you hear people asking people out on dates. <laughs> and these guys are talking about how hard like their teammates are pushing. I'm not like, hey, my coaches, which they are, but like, hey, like Jesse Mendez like pushed me. And you see those guys, they're in they're in those guys' corners all the time. Mm-hmm. We talked about it at uh, Team State, like having Jesse on the sidelines, like having another coach. Like he was he was pumped for those matches. He's in those guys' ear. Yeah, they uh they um the whole Crown Point team was like on the sidelines cheering every match. You could see them, you know, they're in that the bullpen area, whatever you want to call it, yelling for their guys like every time. I mean, if they'd be on the mat if uh if they let them. <laughs> so yeah. So, and um, I think um not being disrespectful, they weren't yeah, like Jason said, they weren't being disrespectful. It was just those guys set the tone like Again, like you needed the Alex Sertzes and the Angels Capitos, the Blake Mowers, the Chad Reds to get to those points. Like um, across the board, like Alex showed us that it was you can have four again. Like it had been what eighty eight to two thousand three. You know, Blake Mowers showed you you can win four by going a lot of weights and winning crazy matches. Angel obviously is a different animal. He just kind of like he's in that. And then you get like a guy like Jason who's out there, you know, winning and like doing it on the highest level. You're like, oh, not only are you an Indiana four timer, you're winning. Fargo, you're beating college All Americans. You're beating college champs. He beat Darian Caldwell that year. Chad, you know, showed you can do it with like do it your way and do it with like some you know different style. Have some fun doing it. And I think all that's like got to us to a point now. And now you know Jesse and Zeke set the bar. Like, hey, like this is how you should present yourself at the end with these interviews, yeah. which is awesome. You know what you want to say? Like practice that. I know Hector said that. Uh, like they would go on trips where they know they're gonna have interviews. He's like, okay, if you win. What are you going to say yeah. and make him give like a speech in there mm-hmm. from a young age, mm-hmm. like talking about like when he won grappler gold in like seventh grade, you know? Yeah. And I, I think like they were just thinking, you know, you're thinking outside the box. You're thinking ahead. Yeah. Um, Nick, just uh, Jesse wrestles the Swiderski kid. I believe it's the 16th of March. It's a week before Pittsburgh. Um, it's in Detroit. It's before NCA. It's a Wednesday before NCAs. So, it should be pretty fun. Um, 126. Yeah. Another great weight class, deep weight class, lots of craziness. Uh, that, that Aiden Sprague, Michael Tharp match Friday night was insane. 
the people's champ man uh, yeah oh the people's champ i was gonna wear my shirt today i wore it next week uh uh on wednesday i didn't uh it's a little chilly down in the basement they just showed me a picture someone just sent me a picture of aiden sprague's ankle looks like he has two ankles oh, nice. <laughs> yeah so um but that was that was a tough one we knew that was gonna be tough um goes to take that up overtime man that was huge yeah and that was that the uh in the tiebreakers, Sprague stood up and Tharp just bear hugged him and lifted him, and the, and the ref gave him two stalls like yeah really quickly. Which I think I, I'd say that's the right call because he wasn't trying to return him; he was just holding him up in the air. And technically, in those tie tiebreakers or in the ultimate one, you need you're supposed to you can ride, you just not stall like grabbing legs and you know yeah. like avoiding wrestling. So that was that was crazy. I was like, oh, he dinged him once. And then he didn't try to do anything in the ref. I was like, oh, my goodness. Because I didn't – I was like, oh, crap, we're going to lose this. We can't lose the number one. Basically, almost two weeks in a row because we lost at 13. It's like, we can't do this. Because I, I knew we had a bad matchup anyway at 126 for Fort Wayne there. I'm like, oh, we can't lose two. So, whew, we, we got we, – you know, we got away with that one. Um, and he obviously rolled his ankle. Um, so, that, that was a crazy match. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought uh, – that's what I thought too. I thought that they would reset it after that first one, but it's tough because like you're in a weird position. Like I think some of those, I mean, I don't know. Like, is that more of a college thing where they call a stalemate than the second time it's more of a stall? Like you call a stalemate in those positions. That one, I mean, I don't really, I really don't know. That's a. Weird I only know because I only know the rules that I look up and send you. Yeah. Yes. If they're on the mat, you know, and I'm like holding on an ankle or just not going off the hips and they ding the top guy, they reset it. But when they're belly to back or I guess belly to belly in that situation, uh, I don't think they are supposed to reset it. Um, but I, I think I in that situation too, like he probably could have returned them there to the mat and maybe got some back points. Yeah. So, so told as said, I, I don't know. I mean, did Tharp know that he got dinged? I don't, I mean, it was loud. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I mean, I'm down there. Those, yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, Nick's down there. You're down there. Yeah. Like, is it as is it as loud as it is? Like, you know, are they yelling like, "Hey, like, you know, action here, advance your position." Like, yeah, hey, we have a stalling. It depends on the ref. I mean, some are some are louder than others. We we all know that. Um, it just depends. I mean, it was loud in the arena at that time. People were cheering because obviously a, a four yeah. was about to take out a one. Um, and then I mean we seemed a little bit closer to the action this year, but at the same time, how much are they, how much can they hear period? I mean, you have headgear on and yeah. So. Well, I mean, like obviously when you watch it on TV, like it's different. Those guys are uh, the highest level, but um, I mean the highest level what they're doing, these guys are the highest level of what they're doing in Indiana, yeah. but those guys are pretty clear, you know, like mm -hmm. when you're watching like big time, they might, and they're Mike too, you know, mm -hmm. they're, you know, Hey, you know, um, you know, we, we have a stall here. They let you know or give a warning or whatever. Yeah. So uh, rest of the weight class, you go ahead and you can talk about the rest of the weight class. Uh, Mateo Vargo, a uh, real good win on Friday night over Griffin Angles. Griffin Angles will be back. He's the only underclassman in that one. Uh, Vargo with the 8-1 to one win over uh, Sprague Saturday morning. Butler with a big win over Gavin Cook. Uh, nice article on Joey Butler last week. Gardner. Likes to grow – yeah, he gardener. That not the article I thought was gonna go, but <laughs> but to get some some gardening tips from him. Um, cause we man, we keep getting our stuff. Man, Kim's out here killing up, uh, killing our mom. I gotta make sure she's not over here. <laughs> I thought those things lived forever. I didn't even know. I gave Joey um, a hard time. I saw him like, hey, uh, how, how are your flowers doing? He's like, oh. like I say one thing about gardening. That's what the whole article's about. <laughs> nah, it was good, man. I liked it. Uh, David Maldonado. Um, he wrestled really tough. I thought that uh, – I know that Vargo was calling that that win last uh, last uh, Gorilla Radio when we talked about that weight. But, man, dude, he, uh, he, dude, he's out there, you know, going hard in your face. If you're going to if you're gonna wrestle him, you're going to have to wrestle him for 10 minutes. <laughs> like, you don't get tired. He's running back to the middle, um, holding good position. Come from behind sudden victory on uh, Ward. Uh, Blake Wolf, Bew Barbender, Bar Barbender, that was a close match. Yeah, I thought so too. Um, Blake Wolf, I think he had to come from behind there. Barbender, uh, real tough. The, both those guys will be back. 
the last couple of Joey, Gavin Cook, David Maldonado, Isaac Warb, Blake Wolf, Barbender are all returning. KT Nelson, Tony Wood, uh, real exciting match Friday night. Both uh, real good styles. Tony Wood only a sophomore. I thought that uh, it ended up being 7-4. Logan Frazier, Keaton Morton, Frazier 11-7. And then Haynes uh, with a 13-2 win over uh, Keegan Stahlbach of Lakeland. Lakeland getting a couple guys there. Yep, yeah. Shayball, you know, that's the first Shea time ball. since I want to say 91 or something. I, I looked it up for their coach. The awesome Lakeland coach, by the way. Nice. <laughs> um, then uh, Logan Frazier, Haynes. I think that was a. I thought that was a major at uh, some point, right? Yeah. At seven five, uh, yeah. That Nelson and uh, Blake Wolf. Five seconds left. Blake Wolf took it. Uh, Blake Wolf was wrestling really well. KT Nelson. I think he defaulted out of the tournament after that. Um, I don't. I didn't hear what had happened to him. That's I know what happened. About he he wanted to put his hand on what he thought was a wall. It was like the curtain and fell and like. Busted his arm or his elbow, shoulder, something on his arm. Really, I kind of just read it. There was so much on the, the social media that I, I skimmed over it for a second. Um, so and he said he was, he didn't want to obviously not wrestle, but that's yeah, you know. So so um, hopefully uh, he's okay. Uh, Joey Butler, David Maldonado, a real good one. Uh, that one ended up being uh, too much for Maldonado to come back from. Joey wrestled really well. Obviously, we're going to get there. We're going to talk about the final. But, <clears throat> you know, just kind of going at him, set the pace. Joey uh, had a real good state finals last year, another real good state finals this year. Uh, Spray, uh, Mateo Vargo, Joey Butler, 5'4". Uh, another kind of weird situation in there. Uh, I think – did Joey get a four on that, that headlock? Uh, I think it was four and escape. Fargo didn't end up coming back. Joey won that one 5-4. Just kind of a weird position. Um, but like I said, I'm not – I don't know. I think I think uh, someone sent it to me in slow-mo. But that, those are happening, like, quick, man. It's hard. Like, those are hard, and, like, you're in the moment of that. I could see it both ways. I don't know. One person told me, like, they thought it was nothing. One other post person told me they thought it was the right call. Yeah. So 50-50 on the people I talked to. Yeah, I kind of saw it and, like, ooh, I mean – what are you going to call in that situation? The, the, the bad thing in these in these types of matches, the, the margin for error is very small. I mean, Vargo and yeah. Butler, they, they wrestle 10 times. It's going to be a one or two point match every time. Sign, um, and, yeah, and sign me up for those matches. If those guys are going to wrestle 10 times, just sign that up. That would be yes. great. Yeah, and they're going to get after it. And it's one of those things that, you know, one call, one 50-50 call that goes against you is going to, well, 100% affect the outcome. I mean, there, there's no... There's no doubt when you're talking guys that are, you know, you're splitting hairs. So that that's what's, you know, as I, you know, whenever I kind of, I, I always just want, you know, no controversy, <laughs> you know, in the yeah. semifinals and finals, no, no crazy calls that, you know, just are, oh, you know, that's not a call you want to see either way. Um, you know, Butler could easily say that he had the takedown at least. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, it comes with, it comes with the territory. You're wrestling high level wrestling. One call can make a difference, and that's. Not I'm right. actually gonna say, if I had to put a point spread on, point spread on that, I don't think uh, five four. I would have went higher than nine. Yes. I would have said nine and a half was on the lower end. If you took the under, you would have won. I, I thought those guys were gonna be like one of those like uh, twenty, you know, fifteen, fourteen matches. Yeah. I thought that was gonna be huge. Like those guys can get. Yeah, I thought those guys were gonna put together a bunch of points, man. Yeah. Um, Def I know Vargo's explosive. I know Joey's explosive. I thought at five four, I thought it was gonna be way more. Like, <laughs> I really didn't think it was gonna be uh, like when. So when Joey got that headlock, and I was like, at, at that point, I'm like, all right, here we go. We're gonna get this. This is gonna be up there. Now Vargo's gonna hit one, and Joey's gonna get. It's, I thought it was gonna be like Ike and Joey last year, right? Yeah. Just a bunch of crazy scrambles, and then when it was five four, I was like, oh man, I would hit. That would have been the under. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I definitely had over twelve to. I had twelve to fifteen points in that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joey and Frazier. Frazier with two real quick takedowns and, and kind of uh, it looked like he had a little bit of adrenaline dump. And they, I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, Joey has uh, he doesn't have a, a low motor. Like he looks like yeah, he came off. He looked like he wrestled another ten minutes. Sometimes you don't know how guys are going to act and they get under the lights. And Logan came out real quick and then it looks like he hit a wall. I don't think his conditioning is bad, but uh, held out for the win. Um, 
that could be the finals again next year. Yeah. I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure Joey has a pretty good motor from, uh, from the garden, you know, gardening. I'm sure <laughs> Papa Joe doesn't have the, you know, I, I'm sure he has to use hand tools and not like any kind of motorized tools. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, he got some hair on him though. Right. Unfortunately. <laughs> hair, yes. That, <laughs> um, he, but, uh, that was a good one. That, that was a really good match. Um, that, but like I said, the, both, all those guys are coming back. Your top four, right? I don't know. Mateo's gone. Wolf's back. Sprague's gone. Haynes has gone. So a lot of those guys returning. Uh, Vargo come back. Got a big win in third place over Blake Wolf. And Wood's Sprague finished back. it out with a bad yeah. ankle, you know? Yeah. Wood's coming back. Ingles is coming back. Uh, Gavin Cook. Isaac Ward. So a lot of those qualifiers <laughs> that are right on that, you know, you, you change up that bracket a little bit in their placers. I mean, I think Tony Wood probably – places without any other draw um, yeah Keith and, Morton and I, also i kind of talked to his dad a little bit saturday night and, and not that they felt the same way but they were kind of like you know out of all the draws it's the one we didn't want yeah yeah um yeah with that, a lot of tough guys coming back there at 26 a lot of good um, styles honestly i want to i'd love to roll this back with these guys that are coming back because a lot of fun styles joey has a great style obviously molinado has a good style um Wood, Morton, you know, there's some guys with fun styles to watch. I mean, that's, oh, uh, yeah, that, if they're all in the same weight class, it's going to be a fun one to watch next year. Yeah. You hope not. You hope some of those guys going to spread out, you know, you know, make sure you can get those. And uh, I'm not going to trash South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually, we were actually talking about that in the stands. I was like, man, I wonder if they're enjoying this Indiana snow coming from South Carolina. I know you're originally from Indiana, but man, I don't know. I'd, be, I'd I wouldn't. I'd take South Carolina right now. So. Not today. Today was fifty. Today's good. Maybe the end of the week, not as much. Um, One twenty, but yeah, I think that's going to be a really good weight coming back. And thirty-two next year could be nasty. Thirty-eight could be nasty. Mm -hmm. One twenty. Uh, this was probably one of the more wide open weight classes that I would say probably had. I didn't. I, I won't. I don't know for sure, but I'm sure it had a, quite a few different picks for the champion here. Um, a lot of really good guys, and this is one that you sh rolled it out a couple of times, and it's gonna have some different results. But it was oh, a fun weight class to watch. Oh, I think across the board, I mean, you could probably play back the semi state and on, and probably get a different set of of wrestlers at the state finals. Just because it's such a deep weight every – and this is like – we always say this is a catch-all weight. You get six-pounders, you get 13s, you get guys coming back at 20. Um, always a really good weight class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Carol Lavelle having a great term, great finals match. He was he was fun to watch all weekend. Um, lost to uh, Billerman the week before and came back and dominated him. I think uh, – Man, I think uh, Kyra Lavelle – I left last year at the state finals after Kyra Lavelle wrestled Cody in the semis, and I was like, that dude's going to be a monster. And I don't know why I didn't take my own advice. I know I wrote that in my book, and it was just like, this dude's going to be the real deal. And came out the whole weekend, every time he won, he'd hold up how many matches, take one off, three more, two more. Got to the finals, hey, one more, we're done. Um, dude was slick all weekend, um, looked well. He came there to win it. Yeah. Like he literally came there to win the, the tournament. Like he didn't come there to get a medal. He didn't come there to participate on Friday night. That guy came there to show out, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just all oh, man. There's a lot of good matches just from the get go. Um, DeMarco Brady was a good, good uh, quarterfinal match. Uh, yeah. With the late Con reversal there. Congratulations to Brady. Uh, two things. One, he had the, the, the guy that had the most buzz on the board the week leading into because Jared Dunn was just ripping people's heads off. And he got a, a good fall, uh, fall Friday night and, you know, get out in the stand. I know he's had some tough uh, Friday night matches. He, did, he didn't mess around on his feet. He got got in on leg, got takedown, said, I'm, I ain't messing around. We're, we're not playing this game. <laughs> and then uh, – Takedown, reversal, two points, whatever. <laughs> but yes uh demarco reyes was was good on uh friday night too i know um anything that we talked about mcginley anytime you got a, a cathedral guy you got to kind of know that they're going to be prepared billerman ran it to the finals big win neil Mosier, noah likens really good match i know coach cooper i i didn't see i, I seen that he was really upset 
Um, I didn't see what had happened in that match, but I know that they were pretty upset after that one. Um, but Neil Mosier, I know, took a loss early on. That kind of dropped him in the rankings, and Cody's like, ah, I think that you're you're mistaken. And I was like, ah, okay, we'll see. And then he showed up, man. <laughs> he, uh, he wrestled really well, showed up. So beat a real tough Noah Likens. Uh, Lane Gilbert, um, Elliot Cornwall. Cornwall, tech fall. Lane Gilbert's really tough. Bro- broke his elbow. We seen him at uh, lunch. He was in a sling. I think they said he dislocated his elbow or broke his yeah. elbow. Yeah, I think it was He finished tough. that match with Lavelle, too. Yeah. He's tough. He's tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ike Rubel, Dominic Mafili, Ike Rubel with a big fall. Braxton Vest, Chris Bone, real good Friday night match. Bone had uh, two takedowns, was leading four to two, going to the third, chose down, uh, got hit with an assassin for three to lose five four. Um, Braxton Vest uh, must be a really, really nice kid that no one sent out the video of him wrestling, no one even looked him up. They did not know not to go underneath them. He, I, I knew that he was really good in the top position, that he was dangerous, uh, and the guys were going there and uh, going underneath them. And <clears throat> Kyra Lavelle, I think, got a couple of takedowns. It's probably like, nah, I'm not going to go underneath. Let's see. Kyra Lavelle, did he ever choose down? Yep, chose down, got away. Did not get away, got rode. <laughs> but yeah, he survived the tell tale. Yeah, no, that's uh... – yeah, that, that vest and Ruble match was crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. A tough match. I, I def- yeah, I felt bad for Ike. Ike's a uh, super nice kid. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these guys are, but but we've known Ike for a long time, and he's just an awesome kid. You, you hate to see him lose. He looked pretty beat up. But as it goes, I'm sure he'll have a good career, a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, vest, vest had a good tournament. He beats, you know. Russell Wall got got to his good positions um, and then scored from those positions. You know, Won himself a spot on the on the possibly on the um, Pittsburgh team. Pittsburgh wrestling classes. Yep. Yep. So that will wait in a few uh, waiting for some uh, confirmations on that. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, a lot of guys enjoying spring break that weekend, man. I didn't yes. even. I used to watch spring break on MTV, man. That's how I, that's how I did mine. Um, DeMarco and uh, Brady, two Haydens. I mean, how many times do you see a lot of Haydens wrestling in a match? Uh, I know those guys probably wrestle at Elite a ton. Uh, I know those guys are definitely big Elite guys. That's a 5-4 win for Brady. Tough tough loss from DeMarco. I think DeMarco had a tough loss last year in the quarterfinals. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Rubel runs it through for fifth. Um Obviously, Gilbert defaults out. So, pretty good. I mean, pretty good weight class overall. And, obviously, we get a lot of these guys back. You lose Dunn, Likens, Cornwell, Rubel, and Vest. So, a lot of these guys are going to be back, probably in that same area. Some might throw up to – go go up to – they grow grow into uh, 126. So, then may add to that uh, craziness there. So, it's going to be another good weight class. Obviously, Lavelle um, – keep improving he's only a sophomore that's going to be very interesting to see how he improves oh, yeah. so 113 ashton jackson on uh, you know he he wins that's what that you know uh got that rematch with dicky made the adjustments um you know last at uh al smith he'd hit a lot of the, the merkel you know slide by to merkel uh dicky was really disciplined didn't give that up but gave up a late takedown and I think just to, you know, kind of let his guard down for a second. Jackson got that takedown. So, um, and then the finals were one zero, won it on a, a penalty point. This is a really weird match. Um, definitely would not want to ref that match. Just not, not not just enough action not to ding someone for stalling, but not enough to, you know, is this one of those just a weird match in some weird positions? And definitely uh, was not a good match to watch just because they're too evenly. Even but, yeah, and I think um, Jackson Jackson's improving, man. And it, maybe the scores don't look that way, but I, he did it. He won this state title different than he won his state title last year. Last year was a lot more scrambles, and I think he hit like uh, um, uh, not a broomstick, but a cutback, and got some big points into a Jonesy. But uh, you're, you're talking this year, he was more controlled and controlled those matches. 
mean, one zero three one three one seven zero. Uh, it was pretty impressive, and he had a, he had a tough way. I mean, Peter Wynn, the first uh, qualifier from Gary and Catholic. Uh, then he had a big returning medalist and Sang, beat him three one. Modern Day brought a, a huge crowd. I know we haven't even talked about that, but there's a lot of Modern Day there. Yeah, and they, they got a lot of tickets in the same section, which is cool. <laughs> uh, Dickey, the rematch there, three one. I know there's some, you know pretty good scrambles. Uh, Jackson's tough on top. Uh, rode Haynes for an entire period. Haynes was close to some turns. Uh, I know there was. I know there's like a still going around of a, a full Nelson or a possible full Nelson that, was, that wasn't called. Um, he got hit for a locked hands. That's that's how it was. He rode he rode Jackson for a period. Jackson rode him for a period. Uh, pretty pretty tight match. It was one zero at uh, Folk Style State, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they wrestled at ISWA one zero. I think there's a little trash talking going back and forth there. Haynes, uh, Jackson was awesome in his interview, uh, real respectful. <clears throat> Just a, an interesting way to cross the board, obviously not have Dickey. I'd like to have seen it maybe Dickey and Haynes on one side, winner get Jackson there, instead of Jackson having to wrestle this whole gauntlet of uh, contenders. Yeah. But hey, man, that's how you win them. Uh, Easton Doster, I know we talked about having like kind of a tough draw, or Doster. That same Friday night, Charles for the freshman, he'll be back. Uh, Dylan Bennett, Dickie, Dickie got tech fall. Dude, I'm t- I thought Jackson Heaston was going to go six at some point. Dude, he's pretty thick at 13. Yeah, yeah he's like, big. Whenever, because I think he wrestled Ipo at nine, and I think we had him in the original rank. He's like, yeah, I think we're going to end up at 13. And I thought he was going to be kind of slow for the weight, small for the weight. No way, man. He was huge. Like, uh, he walked out there. I was like, this dude was trying to go six. Yeah, and he came, I think. Pretty much one match, uh, a couple matches from placing at Ipo at 109, and that's he had to go, you know, weigh in and then go. He beat he beat Jandris at nine. He beat ja- yeah Jandris. He beat uh, um yeah he had some good wins there. Obviously, he wrestled late in the day on that there. So yeah, he's pretty darn tough. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I mean, know he's not super tall, but that was that was an interesting one. Uh, Dickie beat him 10-0. Uh, Eddie Goss with a big, big Friday night upset. Tyler Tishner, 37 and 1, uh, 37 and 0 going into that match. I think, not that Western wrestles a bad schedule, so I'm not saying that, but like, uh, Center Grove wrestles a really good schedule. You see uh, 15 losses for Eddie Goss, and you think, oh man, you see 15 losses. This guy loses a lot. Those guys wrestle a tough schedule, and this is the time of year it really pays off. And uh, just didn't panic in that match. Those both guys are young. Goss with the late uh, overtime takedown. And Johnny Cortez, the the Lake Central guy with ten losses, are going to make a run to the semis. Um, again, like he had a bunch of losses to Shammer and uh, Jackson, and then I know he had a couple losses to Captor Navalchik, who lost to Shammer in the ticket round. But uh, wrestled really well. Had a good win over Gavin Thompson, uh, seven five. Then beat Eddie Goss nine three. Uh, Haynes got him. You know Haynes controlled that match pretty well. Twelve four. And then he wrestled Dickey pretty tough in the uh, third and fourth place match also. So congratulations to him. Their family was sitting by us. They were super excited. Um, Haynes over Bowen Keith. Shammer over Getz. I was happy for Shammer. Great kid. Great family. Um, he had some real tough luck in the, in the semi-state the last couple of years. Uh, good win. And then they, he ran it back to uh, sixth. So you got a lot of guys returning on this one too. Yep, a lot of good wrestlers there. It's gonna be a good weights. You know, obviously, obviously, when we're at these lower weights, most of them are not seniors. <laughs> we did have a little bit of influx of them at 106 this year, <laughs> also. So, which is is rare. Usually, you get one or two, and we had quite a few. We had three here, right? Oh, we did have three. One dropped out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, one one thirteen, great weight class, and a lot of these guys returned back, and you know, obviously. You know, Jackson and Haynes, you know, a little bit of a nice little rivalry right there. And obviously someone's got to score some real points. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's about adjustments and how they're going to adjust, right? Yeah. So you figure, uh, you know, Jackson wrestled a different style last year. Now he's, he, you know, Haynes is going to have to adjust his style to that. Mm-hmm. So 106, <laughs> last weight, uh, Jay Cockaday. Um Went back to back. I know we were looking at the mat. You're saying we were texting earlier today. 
Uh, 12 of the uh, 14 number ones, one state. The only two you didn't have was Rua at 20 and Leighton Jones. Leighton Jones at heavyweight. So those are the only two. And the preseason pre bag. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty, this is not too shabby. Um, Hockaday, you know, won an IPO title. Kind of knew he was going to be in the mix there. Him and John just a lot closer than that team state. Um, so that was that was a real good match. Uh, pretty close there. What was it at Team State? 14-11? Yeah, it was so definitely it was a, it was a yeah. different match for sure, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of what I you know I know we'd said that like if they wrestle again, it's 14, gonna you know Hockaday was trying for a pin. He was trying to get uh, a pin or a tech. He was throwing everything at him. Um, here he was a little bit more controlled and kind of looking for his. He didn't need to worry about bonus points or anything like that. So he didn't have to force things that weren't there. Uh, which, you know, this is one of the ones I know there's another one you said too, but uh, eight of the top nine were ranked in the, the, the eight place winners were in the top nine in the state rankings. Yes. Uh, and then the closest match was the, the only one that was in the top nine that lost was uh, Ishan Tober. I think he was seven. And uh, Levi Johns was nine, right? Yeah. So you would have had if if uh, Ishan would have won, it would have been all top eight guys. Yeah. Sometimes I send me messages and say, "I don't know what I'm doing." <laughs> so uh, Hackaday, uh, yeah, really good tournament. Him and Jeffrey Bailey. I didn't want to see that one on a Saturday morning. You would hope they kind of get split, but Bailey was third at the um, at the uh, East Chicago Semi State. He uh, he pinned Aiden Bollinger uh, Friday night. It's a tough one, you know. Jeffrey's a really good kid, man. I I, I really felt bad for him. Uh, I, think, I believe he was fifth twice now. Uh, just a nice nice kid, man. He sent me a lot of messages when our, when our family was in the hospital. Um, that was a tough loss. Uh, Hockaday six zero over Nathan Smith. Nathan Smith great for him. You know, got a big pin on Friday night over um, Cameron Meyer. Cameron Meyer was a got pulled in because uh donnie feeler had to get pulled out of the bracket so <clears throat> nathan smith real real tall senior jeffrey bailey a senior levi johns a, a great match friday night over ishan tolbert eight six uh gavin gendress they, they were saying gendress i thought it was that was gendress uh be juliano campo uh eleven five she, she got she got after it. i mean she got Scored a couple of takedowns, reversal. I think she got the first takedown, right? Uh, no, I think she got the second takedown. I think John is. Yeah, second it. takedown. She got a takedown in the second. Um, got, got her arm worked. Jeez, that there was yeah, some yeah. deep halves. I think that was, I think oh, that was yeah, a little potentially was, dangerous. She didn't look good, in good position there. No, um, yeah, she was definitely shaking her shoulders. I hope that she's all right. Isaiah Schaefer, um, Owen. Oliver Wilson, Schaefer, 9-5 winner. Jalen May over uh, Seth Aubin by fall. Heather Crawl, Luke Rio, Luke Rio, 9-0 winner. Jalen May with a huge pin over Luke Rio. I thought that was uh, – that was. She high-hipped over on that one. That was a, a good scramble. Yeah. Uh, Jalen May uh, with a fall over Luke Rio. Jalen May came to wrestle, man. He looked good. Uh, I always knew he was good. He beat Ashton Jackson last year, didn't make it to the state finals. I know Gendrus had pinned him at the Al Smith. Um, Gendrus over Schaefer, I thought that was going to be a pretty uh, close match. I thought I thought Modern Day was going to have to make a run. They were going to have some guys in the finals, but they didn't probably, They didn't have probably the quarterfinal matches that they, they were hoping for. Gendrus with the 8-3 win there. Uh, Nathan Smith with, by fall over Levi Johns. Going to, after that match, I was like, man, maybe Nathan Smith's going to knock off Hockaday. He's got a little run, pinning some guys, long, tall senior. Yeah. Hockaday 5-1 went over Jeffrey Bailey. Hockaday 6-0 went over Nathan Smith. Gender's 4-1. 4-3 match uh, for uh, Hockaday in the final. Uh, I, man, I think Gender's is a little bit like – Hockaday obviously got a huge takedown, but they look – Gender's looked like he was trying to put one move together to get the attack, right? Like he was just going one at a time. And then in that last theory, I, I was, like, shocked that Hockaday was able to fight that off. So I think he went, like, three different takedown attempts there. And Hockaday just, you know, willed his way through it. I thought that body lock, he had him. And he was just like, nah, this is my title to win. Yeah. Uh, what did Chris say? He's on the board, the Iceman. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be this surprised to see these guys start a nice little rivalry going forward. 
that's yeah that's what i was just gonna say yeah that and that, that, that was a fun match and even the one at team state that was you know there's is actually the team what state was pretty fun because hockaday is trying to get a pin and jondris didn't back down he's like i'm gonna i'll battle you and he put hockaday to his back a couple times and so yeah so they, they get after it and that's fun fun wrestling right there yeah and uh i mean how can i have the two losses out of state and then um Gendrus had two losses out of state also and then he lost hockaday twice so those guys uh i think going forward is gonna be pretty exciting you know the, those guys can kind of be the spark plugs for those programs i think those guys are just reloading I'm sure we'll talk more about like incoming freshmen and you know guys that were out of the bracket and kind of what we think on the on the next show. This kind of the recap show, but I think there's a lot of incoming freshmen that are going to make some impacts in some of these weights too. Yeah, the, the weight class year 195, you had um, top seven plus the tenth place finish, the tenth ranked guy all placed. So not too shabby overall. Obviously, only one unranked guy placed. Um, so. Congrats to Jackson Weingart. Got an, an I can't. Award. I can't. Uh, I can't blame anyone on that other than myself. Because those <laughs> guys did tell me he was going to be at the state finals. Tell you that that weight class was just a crapshoot, especially out of out of uh, Newcastle. Newcastle was. Uh, that's one we had been talking about. Like, how do you rank this? They've beaten each other. They haven't. No one's beaten anyone decent. No one's you know showed. Dang. They're dot, you know, they're the guy. Any, any of those guys that took a loss to those guys are like at home, like right now, I'm like, dang man, I can't believe he said that right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was um, one of those weight classes, just crazy from the get go. But you know, kind of looking at the rankings, it's kind of interesting just seeing how, how accurate they are, obviously, and that's with everything being shut down, sectional, not knowing draws, you know. Yeah. Then, you know, and that, that's you know, just obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into that, and just. You know, a little bit of luck. <laughs> they're, they're, I think, you know. uh, yeah, because you got to dodge some tough draws and you got to have uh, guys be healthy. Like, obviously, Dylan Graham was a highly ranked guy and, and broke his ankle. Um, a lot of stuff in the, the rankings is reflect, like reflecting on what's happening in the season. Uh, I know Nick said 18 to 4 is pretty good. We know that Hayden Brady is good. I'm sure my pickums had him pretty high, too. And maybe I didn't have him over to Marco, but I know I have him as a medalist. But um, sometimes you, you don't. You, you lose to someone and you got to kind of follow those guys. And I think that Cruz won zero loss and Cruz was only losing the guys that were ranked. So it was tough to like drop him behind, uh, you know, Brady and maybe he did, but those are like tough matches. You know, you look for those or uh, who else? David Maldonado, all of his losses were really tough guys, but you look at kind of where he's at. It's like, ah, oh, he has, you know, eight or nine losses. How can we, you know, how can you maneuver them in there? And, and a lot of times it's just reflection on, on what's happening during the season. It's not like, well, um, well, I really like this guy. He's a really nice kid. Then all the next guys would be ranked number one. Yeah. And Joey Butler, whoever I, whoever's on the, the chat right now. Vargo, I like Chris Vargo. Yeah. You know? Malnado was uh, 25th, finished seventh. Yep. He was the lowest, the second lowest ranked guy that got in there because uh, Weigert was unranked. Yeah. Uh, Landez was 23rd to 8th. So he doesn't give me any love any either there, Nick. So don't. Nope. <laughs> Dude, and I pay his salary. <laughs> hey, um, I pay for his freaking Sorry. hotel room, and that's the kind of love I get. You know. Dead. Um, <laughs> now Logan and Norman lunch. was twenty-two to eighth. Um, obviously, Brady was probably the biggest. Eighteen to four. Um, thirteen to uh, Braxton Vest. Thirteen to three. And, you know, you're looking at, especially 120, obviously that one's kind of a crapshoot. I mean, obviously when you, the 18th ranked guy is right in the mix to being under the lights, I mean, yeah. I'm just going to pull up those rankings. It, I mean, it's not that it wasn't justifiable. It just, it that was a, just a deep weight class. Like we said, I mean, there's four or five guys that we thought could could win that. Um, I mean, you're looking at some really good guys with a lot of state credentials and things. So, um yeah, it's yeah. Kind of but if, if you're 18, we'll buy you a t-shirt. And if you would have won it, we'd call it the Eli Stock Award. And we got him two t-shirts. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, the Eli Stock Award goes to uh, Marshall Fishback now. So uh, yeah, I mean, his lowest, that was eight. I think Eli was like 17. He was in a tough, incredibly yeah. tough regional. Yeah. Where's uh, Fishback was 10. 10. It was close. So yeah, and he, but he had—I mean, his was justifiable also because he lost to uh, Makai Watts, 
and Watson lost to Johnson and Platinov and Branham. So two, you know, guys that are ahead of him. So you do the, you know, the transitive property of how rankings are done, you know. Um, All that matters was Marshall Fishback showed up on Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> In the end, rankings don't matter. They're nice to look at. They're fun to look at. But so it's going to be interesting to see um, a lot of great matches. Um, I think uh, what we'll do, we'll talk about the team race. So there's a lot we can dissect with that on Wednesday. Um, talk about Crown Points team, uh, the Pittsburgh lineups taking shape, getting some commitments, waiting for some commitments. I hope we can have everyone ready to go. I mean, as far as the commitments by Wednesday, if we do, we'll announce it. Um, if not, we might have to wait. Um, so waiting on some people coming back. Um, just, a, you know, congratulations, New Prairie and Rochester. Their first uh, state titles, first champs. Um, pretty impressive. Yeah, and that's pretty cool to uh, see the uh, you know, you know, Rochester has a real good young team, um, real good, and so and New Prairie has some young guys that are going to be coming up. So it's going to be interesting to see those two uh, teams uh, coming back. Um, yeah, I think that's. I mean, if you are a voter for the Mister Grill Award. Get in your uh, ballot. I know it's pretty easy for the first couple, um, but uh, after that, you know, pick some guys that you like. So um, I, I think uh, this year's Mr. Girl was pretty, really clean cut. I think you have a lot of good choices. The f top five was easy, it's just how you want to put them in there. Yeah, yeah. So um, with that, any other comments before we? Join you guys back Wednesday. We're gonna two four. I like I like the two two a week. I don't. <laughs> Sometimes I do. So yeah, it just depends how my life's going. Yeah. Uh, no, it was it was cool. I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it more next uh, on Wednesday. It was cool seeing everybody. Obviously, we have a great wrestling community, and, and meeting the people that are in the chat or on the side is always really is really cool to meet those people. Mm -hmm. Um, it's still it's still weird. Like when you meet people, uh, like kids want to like you know put you on their snapchat and stuff that's kind of weird but <laughs> but it, it's cool though too I, I think that just shows like people appreciate what we're doing and i always think that's really awesome yeah you, got, you, got, you get some nice messages the past few weeks uh that i don't know it's, it's one of those things that you know I, we definitely appreciate the messages um it's just one of those things that uh, we we love the sport we help promote it um and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of work in it but it's it's fun you know meeting the people getting out talking to people um, I don't know. It's it's just weird. It it just it's, from where it started to where it is now. I never envisioned that, um, and it keeps growing and getting bigger. So uh, that's one of those crazy things that you never know what's going on. And you know, I, I had no when we started it fourteen years ago. I had no clue where it would take us. I I didn't know if it would last a year. I didn't know if it last ten years. And now we're almost on fifteen. So <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I, I love it. Yeah, so with that, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back Wednesday. Uh, should be a little bit shorter show, but it'll be a lot of fun, a lot of good stuff going on there. So uh, we'll see you guys Wednesday.